Yeah. Where are we and what's going on? <laughs> I don't know where. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck that. we are. Fuck KLM sucks. <laughs> don't eat the chicken. Boom. Eindhoven, 725. Billy Milano, where are we? What's going on? <laughs> Eating for free. <laughs> Eating for free. Continental breakfast, no hotel. Strictly for players. <laughs> no fun hotel. <laughs> yeah, the no fun the hotel. No fun hotel. There you go. What's happening, buddy? Chilling. How you feeling today? Complimentary. I'm feeling complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening over here, baby? Breakfast, man. <laughs> Breakfast in Holland, man. No spoons. <laughs> This is it. 7.35 in the morning. Boom, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Here we are at Eindhoven at the Dino Festival. I'm the voice you're going to be hearing on the camera today as we go to the festival and hopefully not hurt anyone too bad. As you can see here, we're getting ready to sell mad merchandise to the knuckleheads. Knucklehead. Drew Stone, Bob o Kyle, Jay Fury, Stick Man. We have the latest in fly undergarments. Just think how good your girl would look naked in this. <laughs> anyway, stand by. It's most definitely going to be on. Yeah. There it is. All right. What's happening here, buddy? Huh? The wigger. <laughs> Did he say nigger? He said wigger. What's going on back there? <laughs> this guy hit the eye. Yo. On the way to the on the way to Dynamo. The road into Dynamo. What's up?
this is what you want, come and get it. Absolutely. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Shout out Sunday. Live from the zombie apocalypse. The never-ending zombie apocalypse. Right? Hope everybody's well. It is shout out Sunday. Shout out to Heggs and his cavity creeps design. Oh, that's right. Shout out to Heggs and his cavity creeps design for Dead City merch. All right. There's the first shout out of the day. All right. Hope everybody's well. It's been a while. It's been a week. Right? Shout out to me. Shout out to you, Drew. Well, thanks, Scott. I don't need, you know, I appreciate it, but yo, I don't need a shout out. <laughs> yo, fuck a shout out. <laughs> yo, I want to dedicate this show, um, today's show, to a friend that's passed away, Tony Mignardi. And I also, uh, he grew up with my godfather, Gabe DiRienzo, the godfather of the film business in New York City. Um, so this is for you, Tony. We love you and we miss you. And Gabe, I hope you're watching. So, so that said, you know, yes, Fang is coming. As a matter of fact, you know, that, that's a good segue. Thank you. Um, a week from today, there will not be a show because Fang is coming. There, because it is the first free show at the Bowery Electric. Don't be scared. It's all ages. It is free, you cheap fucks. It is Ape, speaking of New Jersey hardcore, Ape reaching out, I Iannis, <laughs> or as our guest today said, Anus, nothing but enemies, the last stand celebrating the release of From the East Coast to the West Coast, Antidote, NYHC, woo, and bang, that is a week from today, and, and, I got to say, uh, the words come down. Uh, we, tried to, we tried to work around it, but this is a vaccine-only show, and it's a drag, I know, but we do not want to cancel the show. There's two bands that are on tour. Don't want to cancel the show. It's vaccine-only. Everybody's welcome. Don't involve me in your political bullshit. So there you go. Um, Will I be secretly scoping the Amityville show, Drew? We're playing Amityville um, a week from Friday. So we're playing. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, what else? Yeah. Crash Fest canceled? No, it's not. Who told you that? Crash Fest isn't canceled. No, it ain't, bro. Talked to the promoter the other day. They they combined it to one day and they moved it to another place. So, so there you go. No, those guys are those guys are playing on Saturday up there in Amityville. And we're playing, we're playing like five days later in the same place. Go figure. It's a crazy world. Yes, sick of it all's at the Stone Pony today. That's right. In the meantime. In the meantime, ha, na, na, ta, na, na. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. Crash Fest isn't. They moved it out of out of um, the DNA place, whatever that the DNA lounge, and they moved it to where is that flyer? There's a new flyer, but it, it's it's in Pacifica now, we're, and we're still playing with Fang. It's a bunch of bands, and it's only five bucks. Where is that flyer? Hold on. Let me see. So that that's still happening. You know? Supposedly. Supposedly. Um, let me see. Do I have that flyer? No, I don't, but we still have some time. Anyway, what's up with the hardcore shutterbug, huh? Yeah. What's up? What's going on? What's going on? I got a shout out. Uh, my friend's uh, niece made this for me. It's relatively lifelike. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How you doing? How's everybody doing? Everybody seems to be good. 
We had a crazy, we had a crazy, crazy a week. Confusion. Yeah. Wait, you, you know, know what? Yeah, go on. You know, I, I, I we, it, we I had a crazy, it. crazy storm. Hope everybody did okay, you know. And uh, some of us uh, got flooded out. My my friend's motorcycle was under three feet of water. But um, glad mostly everybody's doing good, you know. And uh, pretty psyched for this uh, Barry Electric show on Sunday, you know. Breaking some new yeah. ground, kind of. It's free. You free's know, good. Free's good. Uh, it's all ages. You know, the uh, the vaccine thing is a drag, but we decided, you know, not to cancel the show. There's two bands that are on tour. Yeah, it's yeah. the last show of the tour, man. And 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 that that weighed that weighed heavy into it, man. You know. But you yeah, know, I not, mean, it's you, they coming a long way for this. You know, I'm not happy about the situation, man. But you know. I just set myself, you got to see, you talk about the storm, man. You got to see what happened right here. Listen, I live in a pre-war building in New York City. Yo, there could be a nuclear holocaust outside my window. And you wouldn't even know it. Like, oh, you know. Is it raining? Oh, it's uh, Superstorm Sandy? What? You know, like, my build, the, the, the walls in the build, my building, like, like, you thought the Führer's bunker was solid, bro? <laughs> my fucking my apartment in New York is like off the hook, man. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine. I'm in a. I'm. I have a downstairs apartment, and if I wasn't so inland, I mean, I have so much photography and memorabilia here. I would be very sad. Well, you're in a. You're down there in a basement, right? Yes, exactly. The, the, the dungeon. <laughs> Fuck, are you thinking, bro? This is where they keep me. To get me the help I need. <laughs> Shut up, you freak! <laughs> Stop yelling at me! All right, wait, here, I got a picture from... Hold on. Right on my corner, bro. This is taken on my corner. This isn't... This is one of a couple shots that I took, but... Wait, where is it now? Here we go. Get a load of this. And this is, this is not photo of the day, but... This is pretty off the hook, man. This is right on my corner, right on on right on Riverside Park. Oh, look at that. Yo, some big ass tree just yo, it's it sucks when those when those old gals go down. Like that that's an old tree, man. That thing's been there a hundred years, probably, you know? Probably more than that. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, this thing and this thing fell over and went over the wall into the park, you know. Yeah, lucky you didn't kill yeah. anybody. Listen, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, it's still down there, man. It sucks because I go out there and make my phone calls. I pace back and forth there, you know? Yeah, tree hugger's nightmare. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, yeah, the tree stage dived. Yeah, it kind of looks that way, right? <laughs> yeah. Tree looks bones. Like a pre looks like a prehistoric bird. Yep. Hey, Gary, I got your package. Um, I got your package. You got you got one of these extended test pressings coming your way, dude. Nice. Got, as soon as I could get my ass to the post office, you know. So, what uh, what shirt you wearing there, buddy boy? Yeah, Frank. Well, who this, else am I talking to? Oh, uh, this this is Frank Turner from the Lost Evenings in Boston, 2019, at the House of Blues. Got it. It was like a three day show. Eesh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, let's do photo of the day. Let's have some fun. Wrong answers only, please. Photo of the day. Boom. What do we got here? Wrong answers only, please. All right. Let's see. Frank Turner is awesome. There you go. Okay. Girls like Frank Turner. <laughs> <laughs> is it corn? Is it Freddie Mercury? Good. Is it Devo? Is it STP? Is it the Spin Doctors? The Spin Doctors. What wow. was that one? If you want to call me, baby, we'll go <laughs> ahead and... <laughs> I told you my sister my sister went to some bot mitzvah for something and she's like, you never believe who's playing the spin doctors. Playing bot mitzvahs, bro. Coincidentally, that album came out the same year this photo was taken. Coincidentally. 
Is it Agnostic Front? Is it Queensryche? Queensryche. Is it, is it the Kenny G metal band? He's got the haircut. Is it Smash Mouth? Was it Smash Mouth that had that song? No, is that Chumba Wumba? Smash Mouth had uh, Hey Now You're an All Star. What was Chumba Wumba's Chumba song? Chumba was uh, I Get Knocked Out. And I, I Get Knocked get... Out. But uh, yep. uh, I Get Knocked Out. But I Get Back Up. And this song really fucking sucks. <laughs> All right. Is it simp is it simple red? Simple red. Simply red. Is it Kajagugu? You guys gotta learn learn to you guys gotta spell a little bit better. Here we go. Here's another shot from the same show, right? Yes, sir. If you wanna call me baby, well go ahead. You know what? I fucking love the spin doctors, bro. They rule. I'd rather throw myself off this building than listen to that shit. <laughs> anyway, uh, there we go. Here's another shot. Is it Kiss? Is it the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Kind of close. Getting closer. Getting closer. Getting closer. All right. One more. One more. And. Right answers only, please. Let's get it on. Right answers only, please. That's definitely the Black Crows. <laughs> Is it Iron Maiden? Is it Life of Agony? Close. Gotta say. All right, here we go. Is it Jane's Addiction? Is it Jane's Addiction? Is it Jane's? Is it Jane's Addiction? Is it Tom Araya? Is it... Is it Jane's Addiction? All right, what is it, bro? Jane's Addiction is the winner. Yes, this is, as a matter of fact, this is the classic lineup right here. This is 1991 headlining Madison Square Garden. Jane's Addiction and the Happy Mondays, who I hated. And, um, you know, this, this is, uh, you know, Perry Farrell, Dave Navarro, Stephen Perkins, and uh, Eric Avery, who coincidentally... I just shot Eric Avery last Sunday. He's uh, been in garbage for a number of years now, and he's still out there doing his thing. And uh, this was the the headlining the Ritual de la Habitual tour, which was their their really their big one, you know. And and to me, you know, after that they they kind of got a little cartoonish. And but uh, but that this was a, a great record. This is this was really the height of their career, and then. After this, they announced Jane Lollapalooza says, 91 was Jane supposed to be says. their farewell tour. That was how they were going out, was on Lollapalooza 91. And uh, they ended up carrying on for another few decades. You got it? Jane says, <laughs> I'm done with Sergio. God, have <laughs> mercy. Jesus Moses. Yeah, this is uh it's hard to believe this show is 30 years ago. Juana's Addictionis. Yep. This is 30 yeah. years. In fact, it's funny you mentioned the spin doctors. Um if you wanna call me baby. I just I just read an article about a, a seven week period of classic albums that came out in 91. And obviously that was they listed like you know, Nevermind and Blood Sugar Sex Magic from the Chili Peppers, uh, Bad Motor Finger, Pearl Jam 10. Those right, all those records hit 30 years this year. Yo, what, speaking of Jane's addiction, right? What did, Pe what did Perry Farrell do to his face, bro? You oh, is he looking banged up? Yo, that dude looks like, he looks like the Joker, dude. Hold on. What does Harry Farrell do to his face, yo? Whoa, he does look like the Joker. Yo, dude got crazy with the plastic surgery, man. Yeah, he look he looks like if he did it, he looks like if he put the Michael Graves makeup on, he could be like the skull, like the crimson skull. Wow. Yo, crazy, right? You know what? what? He I mean it, that band used to be so kind of mysterious and cool. And then they became such a cartoon. Dave Navarro became like a, 
like a, a stuffed animal. I, I just can't get into them anymore, really. But I love the Nothing Shocking and Ritual are both phenomenal records. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you know? they made their mark. You know, they did. It just yeah, is, he, it's a shadow of what it was. Yeah, he looks fucking nuts, man. He does look. He looks like a creepy game show. Yeah, host. yeah. He looks like Jenner. He looks like he looks like that other with that Kylie Jenner, whatever, it, whatever. <laughs> Caitlyn. Whatever, whatever the thing is. I don't know what the fuck the, the that thing. is. Whatever, man. <laughs> wow. I don't know what that is, bro. Ah, that's funny. Jay James was cool, man. You know they. So you're not going to get any plastic surgery in there anytime soon? Well, I'm that thinking about. I'm thinking about it. You know, I'm thinking about it. I might have to get a GoFundMe going because I don't like how my <laughs> neck is looking. I might have to get a GoFundMe. Oh wait, I can actually fix that. Speaking of which, I had this nearby. It fix your neck if you want. <laughs> the uh, I have to chop a tree down after this in my backyard that got hit by lightning. Hey, you mentioned Michael Graves, right? Yeah. Yo, anybody out there? Um, Michael Graves is, uh, I talked to Michael Graves like last night and Michael Graves is looking for a guitar and a keyboard player. So if anybody, oh. if anybody wants to play that misfit stuff with Michael Graves, he's looking for a guitar player and a keyboard player, official Michael Graves at gmail.com. Not trying to give a flying about dudes politics. <laughs> if you're down to play some music, there he goes. Shout out to Messina's Axe. Yeah, I gotta go, I gotta go play Paul Bunyan after this. The Axe Man. That's it. You know yep. what? I gotta tell you, Michael Graves was one of one of our best guests when he was he played acoustic was great. I just I actually just saw that again. I I, I saw it and it was it was one of the best shows we've ever done. Oh man. yeah, he he's such I mean, a great voice that guy has. He fucking tore me up, man. I know was I know a lot of people don't dig his politics. This show's not about politics. The show's no. about music. So exactly. You know, there you go. So there you go. All right, man. Cool. All right. Awesome. Well, are you gonna are you gonna go chop that tree? At, are you gonna chop that tree down while the show's going on? I have to go chop the tree down, and then I gotta run to my sister's house for my mother's birthday. So I'm gonna try to jump yeah, on Alan to the R end. Says, "Yo, Steve, you close to Bayshore? I'll chainsaw it for you." Yeah, the chain. Well, no. After I cut the tree down, then we chainsaw it up. Okay. Don't deprive me of the fun part. <laughs> Get out there and swing that axe, bro. I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. There he is. There he is. There he goes. The hardcore shutter bug. The uh, this is what is this? Is this what is this? <laughs> this is the New York Hardcore Chronicles. Live, and we are sponsored by. Who are we sponsored by? We are sponsored by. Don't cry. We are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Generation Records, and located in Corpus Christi, Texas, Chacho's Tacos opened their doors in 2001, home of the Almighty Chacho's Taco. They cook up an incredible home-style Tex-Mex food, and this month they're celebrating their 20th anniversary. They've been supporting underground music since the beginning, and in their, own, in their own words, we ain't stopping anytime soon. Touring bands that play Corpus Christi swing by and get a home-cooked meal. Chacho's Tacos, we got you. The underground scene will never die. Please follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. What's up with New York Hardcore Comics? They opened back in 2013, selling comic books, punk rock, and hardcore memorabilia. Toys, statues, skateboard, decks, tapes, vinyl, and all things horror. We love helping bands push their demos and new tracks, so please stop by and drop off your new music. We have in-store events like Magic the Gathering and Warhammer tournaments, plus meet and greets with bands and some live performances. I don't know what kind of live performance they have in New York Hardcore Comics, because I've been in that place. I don't know who's playing in that place. It's the size of a closet. Open seven days and shipping worldwide. Find us online through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and eBay. Located at 117 Main Street in Dobbs Ferry, New York. www.newyorkhardcorecomics.com. That said, real quick, let's get our guest on. I just want to, just you know what? First, right out of the bat, let me let me let me announce. 
this new show. How about a new show? If you were a patron, if you were a patron of this show, you would know this already. If you're not, if you're just here sucking bud, here you go. Uh, Sunday, September 26th, coming on the show is Mr. Sal Enemy Lococo from Sworn Enemy, bringing one of the Sworn Enemy guys on the show. So that is Sunday, September 26th. Come on. All are welcome. Also, this Wednesday. Hold on, hold on. This Wednesday is Walter Monster Ryan. I know some people love these Wednesday shows. Here we go. This Wednesday, Walter Monster Ryan, Powerhouse, Possessed, Madball, Marauder, Sub-Zero, Lords of Brooklyn, DRI. Then a week from then, because we got the uh, Bowery Electric, there will not be a show a week from today because of the Bowery Electric show that's happening. Sonny Singh is coming on the show. Excited to talk to him about uh, documenting hardcore history. Two weeks from today, Sunday, September 19th, Christian Old Wolbers, Power Flow, Fear Factory, Violence. And then, of course, Sunday, September 26th, Sal from Sworn Enemy. That said, everybody okay? Sonny Singh makes some great videos. Yup, Sal's coming on the show. What's up, Johnny Rock? Hey, Joe, Joe Ackerman. This is coming to you, man. You got one of these coming in the mail, bro. Use it, don't abuse it. So there you go. Let's bring on our guest. Here we go. Here we go, yo. Today's guest is a singer-songwriter hailing from the Garden State of New Jersey. As a musician, he is known for his work with Box Cutter, 25 to Life, and of course, the infamous Fury of Five. He is an avid mountain bike as well as street bike enthusiast. Please welcome, coming at us from Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey, our old friend, James Stickman Rayman. What's up, bro? So, homie. <laughs> Chilling, you know. Here we go, bro. Just hanging out. <laughs> about to, I was about to take a nap. <laughs> well, I sit, I sit too long, man. I get tired, man. Like, I just yeah, want to go you. to sleep. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if it dragged out. Nah, that's all right. 53, bro. You know, things happen at this age, man. <laughs> all right. You're not in bad shape. You're not in bad shape for 53. Nah, I think I'm. I'm probably. I think I'm like in the best shape I ever been. To be honest with you, endurance have you ever, wise. Have you ever stopped? Have you ever? Have you ever like? And I've known you now for a couple of years, but once you started working out, you never stopped. You've always. I've known you've all. You always work out. Yeah. I, 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 now I work out like three times a week and I train on the bike twice in the morning, but then I ride after work, obviously. But I I train mostly now for bike riding. Like I don't I don't power lift, I don't lift heavy, do a lot of body weight. You know, I just try to keep myself strong for work because it's physically demanding. You know, I do scaffolding for a living, so it's you know, it's very repetitive, heavy at times, and you know. How'd you get into that racket? Well, I, I was um, I was a truck driver for a long time. After Fury of Five broke up, you know, I got my CDL and I was working for Tree Services and stuff. Shout out to my man Kelly, uh, you know, and Chica w w worked with us well at a place uh -huh. called RK R R D K or R K D or something. I forget, but uh, you know, I did that for a long time, and then my friend Dan got me into a trucking company for a scaffolding company in like 2004. Mm -hmm which my owners of the company were foreman and general foreman at the time. Shout out to the Mikes. Um, you know, in 2012, I had, I, 2011 lost a job. I took the time off to about July and then I broke my ankle tubing and then, um, tubing. Yeah, it was tubing upstate New York. I went in, to in go. This, is yeah, that like in the a, snow or is that down the no, river? No, in the, down a river. I went to go kick off a rock. And my tube spun, and I missed the rock. It got wedged between the rock and Ooh. took and snapped my ankle in three places. Ooh. Damn! And, but put it, it put it right back into place as it, the water brought me back. 
I got my leg out and I had no surgery or nothing. Even a doctor w- was surprised that it went like back, right back into place. But uh, I was after that, as soon as I was able to walk, I put a post on the Facebook. My friend Ed Nadella, shout out to him, said that Mike Benson was looking for uh, a driver, called him up. I started in 2012, 2014. They blessed me and put me out into the field and made me a union carpenter. And now, you know, I'm a foreman of the company and, you know, I just been scaffolding since 2014, you know. Is that a union gig? Yes, yes. We're union. I'm a, a union carpenter, but I scaffold by trade, you know. I see. So, but we should have right? our own Beto union. Says, Beto says he duct taped his ankle. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? No, I didn't. I, I, I had to go to some, like hospital out in the middle of the mountains <laughs> it was like something out of like predator he, he, he had to duct tape his ankle and, run, and make a run for it oh uh, uh. it, it was kind of like like i was stuck in the river and i got myself to the the river bed but now i'm down <laughs> and i nobody can get me out i had to hop up rocks on one leg to the top it was about at least 20 feet from the river bed back up to like where the campsite was so I'm hopping up rocks. Then they asked me if I want an ambulance ride. And I was like, no, nah, I just drive myself. You know, then we went to this bootleg hospital out in the middle of the mountains, like straight bootleg. It was crazy. Yeah, good so, times, so, man. So, so let's jump into it. Um, how did you come up? Did you grow up in a musical household? Like, wh- how did you come up? Where did you grow up? And, and was there music well, around? Actually, I, I grew up in Long Branch, which I rode that way today on, on my road, on my gravel bike, I rode to Long Branch and, and you know, I resided in Asbury Park for many years as well. So I went to Asbury Park this morning and did a loop and came back and did like 31 miles. So I grew up in Long Branch. Um, I didn't really get into, into uh, music until like I moved to, we moved to um, Old Bridge, uh, I wanna say. And then, uh, you know, started, I started a middle school there and, you know, and it was, you know, the metal militia was from old bridge. So that's where I got into that was, uh, what was it? What was that? That was, um, what was the name of the big, the club there that, that, um, in old bridge down uh, the dirt road there, biohazard slayer, sepultura. What was the name of that place? There was, uh, well, 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 the, the, the bird shell, there was a bird shell. And then uh, before the Birch Hill, though, there was another club on Route 35. I think it was called the Fountain Casino. I'm oh, not yeah, sure. sure. Well, the Fountain you, Casino, yeah, that's that's. And that's they used old, to that's used old to have, shit. Yeah, yeah, they used to have mad metal shows like Twisted Sister used yeah, to play yeah, there all yeah, the time, yeah, sure. and like, yeah. So you know, I grew. That's when I kind of you know got into like the metal plus the like the doors you know black sabbath you know like that you you the rock that was popping back then you know mm-hmm. but you know that that's where it all started in old bridge for me musically and then i moved to uh ocean county and uh i don't know there was a oh no in matawan there was a record store and that's how i stumbled onto like punk rock was the plasmatics i found a plasmatics record I was just intrigued by Wendy o. Williams, you know, with the mohawk and, you sure. know, the she had the big titties and all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? that'll you, that'll, that was enough as a teenager. Wow, you know, if yeah. you're a man, you, 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 if you're into, you know, I was I was like, wow, this this is crazy. So I, I, I grabbed that and I think I grabbed Twisted Sister Under the Blade there as well. And then that led me into like the heavier metal, like Venom, Slayer and all that. Then so you, I moved. Me- it's safe to say you were a metal dude. Like I'm initially. still a metal dude, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, I, I listen to more metal than hardcore. You know, I'm yep. like, like I, I love death metal. You know, like I listen to like Malevolent Creations, like one of my top metal, death metal bands, Sepultura. You know, I listen to uh, Resurrection, Gore Guts, Deicide. You know, I, I just love that brutal, you know, Fear Factory uh, is one of, one of my top, top favorite bands so like the 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 manufacturer and souls of the new uh what is it souls of the new machine or something yeah. like that yeah yeah, I, yeah I, i'm a metalhead you know i crossed over i crossed over you know like most kids did in the 80s you know like 
through the Gnostic front cause for alarm, sure. the crumb suckers, life of dreams. Lee you know, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I liked Leeway back then. To me, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't want like none of the guys from Leeway to think I was great. They always came off to like Anthrax to me, and I was never like a big Anthrax fan. But I love Desperate Measures. You know, uh, Desperate Measures sure. is like that record is that's a good written record. You hey, know what I, I mean? I love. I, I'm, I'm friends with the Anthrax guys, but that shit was kind of corny at the time. I gotta say. You yeah, know, that, I, that, I, that, I, that, I'm the man. That shit was corny. Yeah, though. I was, I was never, I was never into Anthrax. I mean, yeah. before, before uh, Joey, whatever his name is, that singer, you know, I liked the first Anthrax a little bit. Like, you know, Metal Thrashing Man was a dope song. You know, like, you know, with Neil Turbine, the the first singer. But yeah, you know, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I like Leeway. You don't. I'm not trying to diss him like that. No, you know no, that didn't mean? come off. That didn't come off as a diss. <laughs> you know, like, but it always it didn't come off it, as a diss, bro. It always, always, they always had like an anthrax vibe to me, and I could never really, you know what I mean? Like, be like, oh, you know, like the intro is the bomb on, on the first record. You know what I mean? But I, I definitely like Desperate Measures a lot. <laughs> well, but. you know, Hoya says fuck anthrax. You know, Stickman is the most huggable guy in hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> what a Hoya, my man, we love yo. you, bro. We love yeah, you, bro. Oh, um, he's awesome. So, a as a young man, um, is it safe to say that um, you were a troublesome teenager? You ran into a little. You ran into some trouble as a teenager. You had a. You, uh, you had I, I was definitely uh, an unsupervised youth. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So I, you know, I, I was in the streets. You know, wilding out, robbing and stealing. You know, doing drugs, drinking. You know, my mom was never around, so you know, I would live with my grandparents mainly. You know. And just, you know, it was just wilding out, man. Just, you know, drugging and robbing <laughs> and going to shows, doing the hardcore thing. You know, like, like I was getting into, like, you know, I crossed over into hardcore. And uh, I would say like 90, 90, 85, 85, I, I like embraced like the skinhead thing and started going to, to New York City shows where I got beat up once i got punched in the face by paul bearer like i don't know if you ever heard the story but i got punched in the face by him at lemore's at a merciful fate show i think they wow. played it as well yeah, it, yeah but it was me being stupid thinking it was fashionable i was rocking a swastika earring you know what i mean being trying to be punk rock you know what at the time you thought that was like whoa you know oh I, yeah you know you know piss somebody off well it actually worked and uh I got punched in the face. First, they poked it out of my, like, poked it out of my ear. It was him and two other skinheads. Wow. I and, never heard uh, this story. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'll tell you the whole story. I, I had a mohawk. I had the, you know, I, you know, I had the whole garb on, you know, like I had corrosion conformity paint on a leather jacket, spikes, you know. I was that playing, I thought I was playing a part of a punk rocker, you know, and I had, Went to Wildside in Bricktown. They were selling swastika earrings, whatever. I, I had one in the one ear. The, I don't know what I had another one. And uh, I was with my ex-wife at the time. I got married when I was like 17 or whatever. And um, I was with her and her cousin. And we were at the show. And next thing I know, it was like in between bands. And I get poked in the ear. Like right in the ear, bang, and turned around and, and they said something about it. And I was like kind of dumbfounded. And I seen like I was known I wasn't built like that then. You know what I mean? <laughs> like what, what year was, was this? This was gotta be like 86, maybe. Oh, okay. All right. So you really yeah, right. You know, I was still young. What you know, I was probably like six, seven, sixteen going on seventeen, maybe. Right, right. You know what I mean? Cause I married, I married at 17. You know what I mean? So, like, it was somewhere around that time. I can't really pinpoint. I know the show was Merciful Fate for sure. I don't know if Ludacris and Sheer Terror and somebody else played. But I remember Sheer Terror was definitely there. And uh, I got poked from behind. And I turn around. I look at these dudes. And I'm like, oh, shit, to myself. And then I'm about to get fucked up. <laughs> so, I don't know. Somehow it kind of de-escalated for a minute. And I kind of went and hid it back in the crowd. I took the earring out, whatever. And then when I was coming out of the club at the end of the show, Ugh. they were out there. And I kind of tried to, like, 
pretend like I was just blah, blah, and pat. And that was that. And I just ran. You know what I mean? They hit me once, and then I took off. But. Yeah, Lamore was, a, Lamore was a, a place that uh, a lot of that went down, you know? Yeah, but it, it, was, it was ignorant on my part, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I thought it was part of the, you know, I was wet behind the ears. I, you know what I mean? I was trying to find my way in, in into something, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, well, but, yeah, there was a, yeah, I guess there was a feeling output. Now, before, before you got heavily into the music thing, didn't you do a little bid down in Jersey? Well, before before I like when when I started performing musically, yeah, yeah I, I um, you know, I got a, I got uh, I, w I went to jail for like over a little over two years for armed robbery, right? Uh, because of drugs, you know. So um, drugs and alcohol. Will well, I had anything. started. We had started a band. It was uh, Rob DeFrosier, who was in Lethal Aggression. Who also was in breakdown for for a little while, and my man uh, Mike Roberts, you know, he don't like to be called Lunkhead, but that's what he was called back then. But uh, his Mike Roberts and this dude Tim on drums, and we had started a band called Locked Up in Life, which I came up with the name Tripping on Acid, going down to a show in Baltimore with Lethal Aggression, and uh, we played one show before I got locked up. It was really a practice. And we were in Asbury Park in a rehearsal studio, and it was a band from Belmar called Something Else playing next door to us, but it was like a mini show. And uh -huh. we were practicing, and they asked us if we wanted to play it. So we went over, and we jumped in there, and we played a show. So I played one show with Locked Up in Life with those guys, kind of, in, like, in like, eight, like 88. And then uh, I got locked up for armed robbery, and uh, you know I sat for a long time, which really – then changed my thought process about the scene, you know? So, but that's a whole nother, another topic. Is you know? this, this is, I think this is 92, right? Yeah, that's, no, that's probably like, like 90, 91. No, it might even be 1990. I got out in 1990. So that's probably like 90, 90, early 91, because I could tell by the, the tattoo on my forearm. Right. You know, is that right? Is, is is that right? Why I mean, is that right? You robbed the bank. You robbed the bank on your bike. Is that no, right? No, 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 no. Why it is everyone going on about that? <laughs> no, it was a gas is it, station. Is it, it was true a, he robbed a bank on his bike? No, it was a it was a gas let's station. In, and, let's put an end to that rumor. <laughs> no, it was a gas. It was a gas station on foot. It was it was actually me and three other guys. You know, and you know, the only was one. The one dude was over. 18 or just over 18 and we were all you know I, I i was over 18 too so it was two of us over 18 and the other two kids were under 18 they went got it. you know and all of us got three of us got caught one got away there you go Did, so hey cousin joe what's up brother there he is what's up cuz um tell us about fury of five how did fury of five come together what, what were the circumstances behind that well, my first band was locked up in life, and uh, you know, I, I like I, I I explained in another podcast. Always had issues with drummers, and I think the reason because my father was a drummer, and I took out all my anger on drummers. So, uh, you know, locked up in life had broke up, and then I started another band called Position of Power, and then that broke up. So I was in a chill. I was like in a chill um, moment in my life. And then uh, Mike Terry, who was Mike Terror, mm -hmm. was in Locked Up in Life for a little while. He had Jay Fury, a drummer named Mark. And they were, I don't know if they met like at an AA meeting or, or something like this. But they were jamming together. And um, he had called me up. And uh, I had a the guitar player. Johnny Anger, he I think he was in Locked Up. Johnny Life. Anger. Yeah. And uh, so it, he, I took Johnny Anger with me. And we, well, I went and met Mike and I was with it. And then I asked John if he wanted to do it. And that's how it originally formed. It was me, Johnny Anger, Jay Fury, Mike Terror, and, and this dude, Mark. But, but, the, but, but, the, but the real, but really the, the conduit to get was really Mike, right? He's the one that sort of, yeah, Mike, him in the other band, Mike was really 
it was you and Mike initially, right? Yeah, yeah. Me and Mike, we go way back, and uh, yeah, he had new. He had, like I said, he met must have met Jay Fury and right. Mark. I don't know if Mark was in the AA, but Jay Fury was definitely doing some kind of probation thing or something. Maybe how to do that for something. They were doing like an AA or, or something like this, and that's where they met, and then. We got together, and we the first song we wrote was called "I Owe You Nothing," and uh, then the rest was just just piled on. We writing and writing and writing, and never stopped writing. You know, yeah, you, we had, yeah. we even had a fourth record written at, right after. You know, we had this time is personal written. We had another record written ready to go, but you know, then we broke up. So, and that was going to be called "King in the Mountain," which is ironic because that's all I do is mountain bike. <laughs> did you record did, was that do you record that well i don't I, I don't know i know jay fury might be sitting on a lot of like stuff that we recorded in the studio like there was a setup that we could record inside the studio so yep. i don't know if you know jay fury has any of the recordings like we had a song called king of the mountain like we had a lot of lot of songs and uh yeah i don't know you know yeah, we'll we'll get to we'll get to the uh let me see, I got a picture here of Fury of Five. There you go. That's the that's, that's, a, little, that's a little bit later. That's but. Victory Records. That's when we got onto Victory Records and uh King Fisher. That yes. was a photo we took for that. Yeah, that's when I got involved with you guys. Right. Yeah, I think you got right right at as as uh, at war with the world. Yeah, that was out already. That was out on victory, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there was a couple of seven inches, right? Two seven inches. Yeah, and one then, was, and then, and then the victory uh, release, correct? No, it was. Uh, we put out um, convicted and condemned mm -hmm. on. Uh, I think that was. I don't know if that was on a Connecticut label. I I, I don't remember. And then we put out. Um, telling it like it is uh, on an, another seven inch, and then we did no reason to smile. Okay, which was on Gang Gang Ground Records, and uh, then then uh, at war with the world. This time is personal on Victory and King Fisher. Here you go, Drew. Which band was harder to manage, Marauder or Fury of Five? <laughs> 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 um, I can answer that. You want the answer to that? Marauder. We never had I don't we never had any problems when I was managing you guys. No, nah, the only the only thing with that and I asked you about it if you had the video when we stepped to Cold Chamber at at the Dynamo Fest when Jay got all up in Desi's face. I don't I, I don't have a I have a video from Dynamo. Um and I was looking for that, but I, I don't have I don't have a confrontation. I don't have the confrontation. I wish you had the part when when we came, we were going to the death metal stage, and Seven Dust and Stuck Mojo saw us coming, and they darted back into their bus. Remember, we were coming through the gate, and, and they... it, was, it was a crazy time. <laughs> Listen, you know, you know when I when I when I when I decided I had to manage you guys was when, and, and I don't want to mention any names here, but. There was a sort of infamous booking agent. Who, that... Finberg? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that dude. So there was a booking agent. Straight pervert that dude yeah. is. You there know? was a booking agent, and you guys trounced him. He was your booking agent, and there was some sort of a, some sort of a discrepancy, and you guys trounced him. And I was well, like. Well, he was, he was bad-mouthing us to pe people in clubs that we already played for. So – you're supposed to be looking us out, getting us shows. When we were on tour, we came back. There was a message sent from, uh, I don't know if it was Teddy Etall or a dude, Jay from Rhode Island maybe. I, I don't know. Said, yo, your booking agent is telling us not to book you guys, that you guys are troublemakers, you're unprofessional, which wasn't the case because when we were about our business, you know what I mean? I mean, things went awry at times. We fuck some bouncers up, you know what I mean? Or beat some idiots up or white power dudes up, you know? But we were always about being professional on time, you know, getting our music. We were all about getting our music out. So we wouldn't yeah. we wouldn't 
try to jeopardize anything on that aspect, you know, and then uh -huh. he was going around bad mouthing us and it wasn't us that knocked him out. It was one of our homies, you know what I mean? <laughs> and yo, and it, 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 he got aired out like right out of shoes, man. Like for real out his shoes. He got it was, knocked it was out the of stone, shoes. Stone pony, right? Right in the stone pony. Yeah. yeah right I in front of earth crisis. I mean, they were on stage. Carl tried to stop me from going at him, you know? And I was like, fuck this dude, this is my town, you know? Like, and we just, and you know, me and Jay were taunting him because we kind of knew that harming him could be bad for us, you know? And when we were, like, we, we were trying to uh, figure things out, one of the homies, corporate thug, you know who you are, yo, just was like, he said, just like this, he goes, wait a minute. This is exactly what he said. Wait a minute. He said, this is your booking agent. And I was like, yeah. And he's going around talking shit about your band to clubs. And I was like, that's what they're saying. And that was it. As soon as I said that, the next thing I knew, John Big John Finberg was flying in the air and hit the wall. And his shoes were standing, sitting right on the floor, right in front of me. Like knocked him out of his shoes. How hard you got to hit somebody and knock them out of shoes? <laughs> well, after that, after that happened, after that happened, you guys somehow came across my radar screen, and I was like, "These guys." Well, knocked, I think it was a shot. Knocked, these guys knocked Finberg out, like just like that. I said, "I got to manage these guys. This, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta." <laughs> well, it wasn't long after, after like the phone. Jay Fury can attest to this that like people were so happy. And people, so many people wanted to do that because he was just a scumbag ripping off bands, yeah, you know what right. I mean? Just, you know, be, right. doing scumbag right. shit. And he, he got what he deserved. And he tried to, he tried to flip the story around on a podcast with my man, Doc Cole, but me and Doc just did a podcast. So I rectify it. His, his story is not what it is, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, that that's, that's how it goes. Um, so Moving along, you know, Fury Five uh, gets rolling. Uh, we did the Do or Die video. That yes, was great. we did. That was awesome. That was awesome. It's awesome. The, the, that spin move I did in that video is like the most loved thing. Like there's even a gif of me doing that. Like it's awesome, bro. It was you a remember good that video. place that we shot that video in? It was like yeah, the old casino, it, casino pier, the skate park. You can walk through that thing now. It's like totally like. They took the ice skating ring off where we filmed. Yeah. And uh, but you can walk through it now, like straight through. Like they, they, got they, they refurbished it. Well, kind of, you know, yeah. Asbury. Like I was just in Asbury today and I was dumbfounded uh, on how different it is from that video till now. Like, yo, it's like modern. Like yo, all those so years, all those years that that. We go down there, Biohazard played the fast lane when I was managing you guys, when we shot the video. It was always like, yo, Asbury's, you know, on the comeback, you know? That shit took fucking 30 years. Yeah. And now, now you go down there, you're like, wow. Yeah, we used to call it Beirut. You, yeah. You know, like, you didn't want to be walking around down there, you know? It was, yeah. it was crazy. Now, you could grab a beer and just walk down the boardwalk. It's all nice. Remember it's beautiful. All the shit. Who's who's. Who's FIT P97? He says, remember all the pigeon shit. Sounds like he was there. I don't yep. know. Yeah, but that was a great, that was a great video, man. That was yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was good. But when, when we were when you were playing the song through the speakers, stuff was falling from the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from that, from the echo and the vibration, oh. you know. But that was that was great. That was a great video. We did it in the strip club in Long Branch. Is that you know? right? I don't remember yeah. that. Yeah. That's where we did the poker scene. Oh yeah, in, in, in this yeah. in the strip club in Long Branch. I forget what Here, it was called. Here's a shot of us from from Dynamo, bro. This yeah. is this is from Dino, and and you see that footage that I opened the show with, uh, Bapo. Yeah, that, yeah. That was Rest shot in the peace. morning that this. That was shot the morning that um that we shot th that we took this picture. Yeah. Rest in peace, Bapo. That was yeah. my man. Yeah. Great dude, man. Great dude. Yeah. Big Kyle over there, Jay Power. Oh, Jay Power. That was his name. I couldn't remember his name. Jay, yeah. Jay Power. 
Yeah, you guys were you guys were great that day too, man. Oh, it was an awesome show. Awesome. I, I mean, can't believe you, we flew us in there for just that show. That one day. That was awesome. Now Ono Cromag. Ono Cromag hooked that up. Yep. Now Good Fury dude. Fury put in some work. You guys did a bunch of uh European tours those years, right? Yeah, the first the first tour we did was uh with integrity. And right. the first day I thought it was over. Like we get on on the tour bus. DeWid's got a black guy. Him and uh, I think it was Blaze. I think his name was Blaze. They had a fight over something. I thought the I thought the show. I mean, the tour wasn't even going to happen, and uh, but it did. And those guys ended up being really cool. DeWid was cool. You know, I just saw DeWid not too long ago at a, a tsunami fest. Same dude. You know, cool dude. Yeah. But and then uh, our next tour was with uh, Propane. And that was that was a better tour for us. The first tour sucked. I yeah. hated it. I hated. Right. I hated Europe. I hated Germany. I was so angry in Germany, man. I had a lot of fights in Germany. We were just trouble flipping cars, just being tyrants. <laughs> the whole tour, we were tyrants, man. But the pro, propane tour was 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 a good one. I remember. Yeah, that was. Well, I guess because the crowd. Integrity had their own crowd. That was the problem, right. you know. And we weren't we weren't known. You know what I'm saying? Like to to the depth of integrity. You know, they were like some phenomenal straight edge men from Cleveland, and you know they had fan base. They've been around for a long time, yeah. and their crowd was just their crowd. Yeah, you know, like that was like if you come to Snow and Pony, it's a Fury crowd. Anybody yeah, yeah. that goes on. After Fury, you, you might as well not. You know what I mean? Because yeah, that was our. That's what was happening to us in Europe. You know these other. I mean, DBA got a good uh, response because they're from Europe and they they played there. But we were having a lot of problem. People were calling us biohazard. I remember walking off stage a lot, like "fuck you, motherfuckers." You know, I you know wanted to I'm beating people up from the from the stage and clubs, man, just jumping. I remember I jumped off a stage in Germany. This dude, he kept on, he kept on saying shit in, in another language. Well, I'm German, obviously. He was saying something and kept on pointing at me. So I went up to Chico. I said, yo, I'm about to get this dude. Watch my back. And then I, I, I say that I, I, uh, good old, good old Chico. <laughs> yeah. So I say, uh, I say on, on the mic, I say, listen, just because I don't, Speak your language. Don't think I don't know when you're talking shit about me. You keep on going. You keep it up. You're going to find out. In the middle of the song, the, the dude, and I just jumped off the stage and just started throwing haymakers on this dude. <laughs> and the whole club disappeared. Disappeared. <laughs> and then we played. We went right back to playing. And like maybe four or five people came back in. <laughs> It was pretty funny. Is this what? What is this an ad for? This is for the seven inch. The for it has Jay Fury's address on it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that was uh, the first. Yeah, just in case records was from Connecticut. Got it. That was our. That was our. That was our first. Um, our first release on on a on a seven inch. I think the songs were, um, rising and uh, maybe a life for life. Oh, uh, no stay execution. Maybe it was called. I don't remember. I did. I did. I had. I used a. It was a song that I did in position of power, but it had like uh, a lot of flavor, and people loved it. So I I redid it with Fury of Five, and uh, people still 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 like the song. I think uh, it was the, called. Vase TV says upload the do or die video in better quality. I wish I had it, man. You know. Yeah, I don't. I don't have it either. I don't have it, man. <laughs> like I don't I, even know who uploaded that video at all. To be honest I regret with you. I regret not saving these things at the time, you know. Hey, somebody wants to say hi. Hey. Hey rat. What's up? Uh, <laughs> rap bones. Yo, what's what up? up? <laughs> what's yo, up? I hate to tell you right now, Drew. I don't I'm not going to take over the show, but this is my man right here, yo. <laughs> you, you, you got I, a couple Yo, you got I a couple do minutes, have a bro. Vacation. I want to walk him back down memory lane real quick. I'm the collectible guy on the show. I know it's Sunday, but I did grab this classic this weekend for five bucks at the flea market. That Defenders you of know, the Fate? 
Yeah, five bucks, Defenders of the Faith. But I, yeah. I'll go. Metal. Metal all remember, day. Bro, I, I remember <laughs> the first day I met you, Stick, bro, kind of. Uh, we were walking down that road to the projects where you and Billy lived, or Billy Jeffers lived downstairs, and you lived with your wife and your brother up in the apartment. And there was a Cumberland Farms on the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like how far we Jamestown go. Jamestown Village. That's what it's called. Oh, Jamestown Ocean Village. County might as well be our Astoria. You know what I mean? <laughs> Altarelli came out of there. You, Bapo, rest in peace, Eddie Ramos. You know, just that whole era of getting the hardcore, discovering it all together, man, hanging. Damn, is that a prison that photo? Answer. What is that? It almost looks <laughs> It's an Ala a Michael Alago photo, almost. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, and you know, I remember when we named you Stick Man. You know what I mean? Because you were yeah, stick, yeah. And then you turned into Thick Man. You know, but that's when I got you know, out. Eddie Ramos is a big connection to it all with me too. I mean, he introduced me to Sob at Bleaker Bob's, and then we got you know because that was back in the days. You come to find records at like some records or down there was that downstairs record store right around the corner from CB's. And as you're picking out records, there's a bunch of skinheads in the corner, like, yo, what are you, who are you repping? Like, you know, it was, it was a much different time. And uh, I just want to walk you down memory lane really quick, dude, and show you some <laughs> of these OG flyers that Rich Beatty sent me, bro. Wow. Lethal. Rich Beatty. Shout out to Rich Beatty, yeah, oldest man. punk rocker I know. Night, Nights at Columbus. And it always wow. has like the kid's number to call. You know, that's one. Lethal aggression, man. Adrenaline overdose. Hogan's Look at that. Hogan's Heroes. Heroes Social, Social Decay. Decay. Social Decay. Again, five bucks, right? Garfield First Aid. Suburban Uprise. Yeah, dude. I know you Good did. name for Good name for wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the, the, Didn't I have a beef with those dudes? Didn't we, I get intuitive with them at City Gardens? Okay. School of Violence. Yo, I'm just running them real quick, man. Because the last one is the one. This is a famous show in New Jersey that was on, I think it was even this weekend. It looks it's just called Tommy, got the kid's number on it. Oh, that's what everybody got arrested. And, and it turned into a huge riot, man. Yeah. And, and it's like we made the paper. We went for years and years in that town. So, I, I mean, you had no tattoos when I met you, and I remember you showing me, like, the pentagram on your arm and telling me you yeah. were metal and stuff. It was like we were so proud <laughs> of what we were doing. I know? had a pentagram and, and uh, an upside-down cross. I was all about that metal I, life, I'm man. glad I got to know you in, in, like, such a special time in life, dude. We did our thing, bro, down there. Oh, we yeah. The shore core, you know, no doubt. Yeah, they shore, don't understand. Uh, shore core. That's what it used to be called, shore core. GR. We Is were that right? GR crew. Because we saw a suburbia and they were TR punks, the rejected. So we turned into the Tom's River crew, TR crew. And, you know, yeah. uh, Stickman was always down with the hip hop, you know. Always, you know, always been. Everyone acts like an NWA fan now, but like back in the day, if you had the NWA, you were cool. But if you knew about the Easy E, Easy Does It, you were like, <laughs> you know, we, we were the hardcore hip hop, hardcore skinheads back then were like, People weren't really mixing it all up yet, so man. Yeah, know, oh, I I always, metal. always been into hip hop. Even at, even when I was a metalhead, I lived in Lakewood, which was pr prominently a black area, and uh, you know, I used to hang out with. That's when people used to break dance. You know what I mean? They used to bring bring bring, bring, bring the cardboard like boxes, the yeah. linoleum pieces, and I used to hang out and just you know I could break dance at that time i can't do it now i probably break a leg or something but you know i i was always always into like even now run dmc's first record is one of my favorite hip-hop records of all time that thing will come on i'll sing every single lyric from sucker mcs hollis crew rock box yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like i i love it i love it well hold that you thought know? because we're gonna do album of the week so I don't want I don't want to stumble across it. So uh, Rat Bones, uh, you All got right, anything else? Stick, man, just let me end it by saying shout out to the whole TR crew, the U-Haul crew, the U-Haul side hardball <laughs> crew by the flight pole. Rest in peace, John Saltarelli and Stick Man. I'm like proud of you as a brother to know like we came from a dusted kitchen somewhere. <laughs> that we was looking facts, at the facts, dog. man. I, 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 we're, we're dominating you know Yo, like, i i'm always i'm always like i you know 53 years old you're probably the same, same age as me same age. and uh 
you know, I look at my life right now and I'm like, yo, I came a long way. You know what I mean? Like I just bought a new house. I'm married. Yeah, my yo, I've been I, I'm probably at the happiest point I ever been in my life. And I've been an angry motherfucker my whole life. And you guys know how violent I used to be. You know what I mean? I try to explain this to people at work. Like, if you would have known me way back, you probably wouldn't have liked me, you know? But I've yeah, changed. You were, you were a little difficult. I was difficult. We never had any problems, up. but no. But, but I, I I was a scrapper and I loved I love to and I I love to inflict pain on people you know what I mean but I've had so much closure in my life and where I've elevated to is 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 mind blowing to me you know even today when I'm riding my bike you know I did 31 miles this morning at five like right before six o'clock I went through Long Branch where I grew up I lived there for 12 years and I went to Asbury Park I was there probably 15 16 years. And just to see those changes, let me know, wow, I've came a long way. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, I'm very thankful and very grateful. And, you know, I, I don't take anything for granted, but I have no regrets either. I had to walk with this path to get here. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, everybody has, I tell this to my son all the time, everybody has a path to walk. You'll find your way. You just got to be driven, have purpose, have goals, have a dream. And and things will happen. You know what I mean? I always have. Like, you can ask my wife. Just now, we pulled up into Red Bank. I, lo I love where I live now. I'm so happy where I'm at. And I see nothing but mansions. I said, that's my next move. You know what I mean? Will it happen? I don't know. But I set the goal. And now I'm going to try to achieve it. You know what I mean? And that's all you creative, can do. It's creative visualization, my man. Yes. Oh, you hey, you Rat, can make, Rat, we'll make you things later, happen. Man. Yeah. Good luck to you. Hey. Everybody. Do stick, man. Always, yeah. A, always a much friend, love, bro. bro. Right. No much doubt. love, man. We got mad history. Well, you know what? You know, awesome. Give rat. Listen, let's give rat. Let's give rat a send off. You ready? Rat bone. Rat bone. Rat bone. Rat bone. Rat bone. Rat bone. <laughs> <laughs> One crazy dude, man. Hey, let, let's go. Let's go a little deep because some somebody. Somebody asked, where is that? Okay, let's go a little deep, brother. Where did the spark for violence and anger come from? Well, obviously, it's a, a lot of things are learned behavior. So I was an abused child. So I was beat a lot. I see my mother get beat. You know what I mean? I've been around violence. My dad was violent to us. You know, like, so, you know, I, I was raised low income. So violence has always been around me. So it, you have to use that as a defense because if you don't fight back, you're a victim. I never wanted to be a victim. You know what I mean? So I always, always defended myself the best I could. You know, I didn't really get the power to really hurt people until I got locked up. And I was just explaining the story to somebody else. You know, I always been stick man, you know what I mean? For a long time. When you hit just hearing the name, you think of skinny, frail, you know, soft, whatever. When I got locked up, I got jumped. They took all my shit. I said, this is never happening again. I'm not a punk. I'm not a pussy. I started working out. I quit smoking cigarettes. Next thing you know, people are saying, oh, man, you got big arms. you this and that, you know? I'm like, what? what? You know what I mean? There's no mirrors in jail. You can't really see. <laughs> But it wasn't until I knocked out my first person in jail that I knew I arrived and I had fucking power now to back up whatever I want to do. And I ran with it because when you're in when you're locked up, you can't think you have to act. And that mentality stayed with me for a very, very, very long time, even after I got out. Like I would beat up my friends if I felt disrespected. I was fucking you up. I don't give a fuck who you are. You know what I mean? Guy, girl, it didn't matter. I was Booking fucking, agent, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Police, it didn't care. You know, listen, I have, you know, whatever. My record's very long. But, you know, this all transpired from a youth, all this rage. And now, as I'm older, I've let a lot go. I had a lot of closure. I'm able to see things differently. Yes, the beast is still there. And he shows up. I hate when he shows up because I don't want to be that guy. 
You know what I mean? Like I want to, I wish I could remove that guy, but I can't because it's part of my, my, who I am, you know? Was, I, I think I was going to court that day. No, I was oh. actually actually going to somebody's wedding. I, but, uh, I, 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 I like clean it. up clean up pretty good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. You know. Absolutely. But I'm not I'm not angry. I'm not angry anymore. I mean, I have my moments, and you know, my friends at work they 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 know who I am, and they they do me pretty well. Like when you I'm having a moment, man, you 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 could not. As, a, as an old friend, you could not maintain that level of, of, of anger and, and, and violence and survive to be as old as you are. You just no. can't. You no. can't. You know, what, what happened was when Fury of Five, I think I used a lot of violence to, to hide my depression, you know? Right. So right. Inf inflicting pain in others help me see how I felt inside sometimes. So like, mm. I, you know what I mean? It was, you know, and uh, when I found myself standing alone after Fury of Five broke up, you know, I went from having so many friends, uh, you know, and then Fury of Five over, I found myself standing alone and my baby mama wanted to leave me. And then I had an, another situation where I had a son that I didn't raise which is another long story that I met him in 2010. But, you know, I thought it was going to happen again. You know what I mean? And I'm not that guy. I wanted to be a part of my son's life. You know, thankfully I was. But mm -hmm. I, I, I found myself standing in a world of depression. The worst depression I ever, and I still struggle with depression. This mm -hmm. is why I ride all the time because it clears my head and makes me think a lot clearly and see things differently you know but i i've always getting a, and and my wife she she knows right hey, away that when mic I, is that mic is rubbing on the hood you might want to oh. just take the hood down yeah there you go there you go all right hey let me take a sponsor break and uh we'll come back in a couple minutes and we'll do album of the day with sid the kid and we will continue okay yes sir all right what's happening this is the new york hardcore chronicles live our guest today the stick man from Fury of Five, James Raymond, old friend of ours. We will continue. Um, we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chachos Tacos, Generation Records, and the Texas Silver Rush. It's a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as to style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers Greg Rollet, Ringo Starr, and of course, our friends, Agnostic Front. During this current never-ending pandemic, all information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram page, and of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. Generation Records, since 1992, has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and, believe it or not, reggae LPs, as well as t-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you, my friend, top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow them on Facebook or Instagram. Last but not least, DTFM Vinyl Distro is a record store that specializes in underground music, punk, ska, hardcore metal, and more. Located in the heart of Fargo, North Dakota's Industrial District, shop in person or online at www.dtfmvinyldistro.com where the motto is, death to false metal. Want to mention a couple of upcoming shows. No, first I want to mention the Patreon page. Uh, you can support the show. Many of you support the show. Your support is what makes this show happen. That is not news unless you've been living in a friggin' cave. So there you go. There's the Patreon page. Please support the show. There's a PayPal address there if you want to make a donation. It's your support that makes this happen. Don't be fooled by cheap imitations, people. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. We work hard on this thing. Coming up, Wednesday, September 29th. Hold on. Let me clear the deck. What the heck? 
Coming up Wednesday, September 29th, mixing it up a little bit with Jimmy Hazel from 24-7 Spies. There you go. Should be cool. Always liked it. We always like spies. So Wednesday, September 29th, Jimmy Hazel's coming on the show. Of course, October 3rd is the 150th episode with Paris Mayhew from Chromags and his new project, Agros. Of course, uh, we did a bunch of music videos together back in the day. That's why I have some of those gold records behind me. Lots to talk about. That is the 150th show with Paris Mayhew. Want to announce a show. If you are a patron, you would know this already. So it is not too late. Join Patreon. Uh, yes, Patreons represent. Um, coming up by popular demand. You wanted it. You got it. Brett Rasmussen from Ignite is coming on the show. Let's get some West Coast on. Let's talk to one of the Ignite guys. Uh, also, TJ Hoffman, who directed the film Roadie, is coming on. Um, Brett is involved with that film. Uh, TJ was a, a, a roadie for Agnostic Front and for Ignite. Uh, check out many, many, many have seen his new uh, film, Roadie. We're going to talk about it on the show. Don't be scared. That said, um, yes, 24-7 Spies. Psyched about the Paris show. Good. Good, good, good. Yes, happy holiday to everybody. And yes, Jimmy is coming up. What's up with DMC? Yo, you want, you want to know something? What's up with DMC? This is what's up with DMC. This is how close. Wait, where is, where is the, the infamous DMC flyer? Do I still have that? Or did I chuck it? I might have chucked it. We were so close to getting DMC. I don't know. We're still working on it. Um, no. Oh, here it is. Here's a show. Here's a show, kids, that's not happening yet. Hopefully it will happen eventually. We're trying to nail this guy down. Um, it's been weird. But, yeah, we had it ready to go and everything. So we're on it. We'll, we'll, we'll get DMC eventually. We get to everyone eventually on this show, right? Um, you know, we'll see. Um, what else do I want to mention? Uh, the Bowery Electric show is a week from today. Once again, let me put the flyer up. Perry, Fe Perry Farrell uh, is on the flyer. Perry Farrell and the new governor of New York is on the flyer. Um... The show is free. It's all ages. And the word has come down that you have to show proof of vaccination. It sucks. That's how it is. Uh, Ape reaching out. Iannis, nothing but enemies. The Last Stand, Antidote, NYHC, and Fang at the Bowery Electric, our new home. Sunday matinees are back on the Bowery. So there you go. That said, who else? This show is dedicated to the memory of Tony Mignardi, a friend of mine. Um, he grew up with Gabe DiRienzo, uh, one of my big influences as a filmmaker, the godfather of the New York um, film business, uh, family. Gabe DiRienzo's family, Tony Mignardi, rest in peace. Um, I mentioned Michael Graves needs a guitar player. If anybody's out there looking for a gig and um, is down with this sort of thing, Michael Graves is looking for a guitar and a keyboard player. Reach out to him at officialmichaelgraves at gmail.com. All that, all that American Psycho stuff. Dig up a bones. So if anybody out there is looking for um, a gig, and uh, reach out to Graves. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That said... I think that covers everything. Everybody straight on the patrons. Also, subscribe to the show. There, if you're watching this in rerun, there is a subscription button right there. Please subscribe to the show. Also, I think for once I'm going to remember this shit, right? Insta uh, Instagram. Follow the show on Instagram if you have one of these communication devices on this planet. 
this planet Earth, speaking of the misfits. Instagram, pick it up right now. Right now. Pick it up. At Stone Films NYC. All right? There's also a merch line. Underneath, there's the uh, New York Hardcore mug. There's the do things and good things will come to your line. Support the show. Please support the show. Drew, is your show freezing? No, it's rather warm in here. Um, email is spelled wrong. What is spelled wrong? Uh, Graves' email is spelled wrong. Michael Graves, uh, like, uh, no, it's not spelled wrong as far as I know. Nope. I think you're wrong. I think you're very wrong. Uh, yes, y yes. If you have one of these tracking devices, yeah. So there you go. Um, it's also Rat Bones' uh, birthday coming up on Sunday. Rat Bones is. Is there a plural of Rat Bones? What is the plural of Rat Bones? Rat Bones is? Could there be more than one? Anyway, that said, um, yeah, that's how he spells it. Uh, let's clear the deck. Yeah. Hi, shout out to the Antidote NYHC test press crew. I know there's a couple people. There's a whole stack of these that's going out. Joe Ackerman, Roger Moret, you got one coming. A couple other people. So those are what's going on. Um, that said, let me clear the deck. Hold on, hold on. If you hold on. Who did that one? Wilson Phillips, right? If you hold on. Man, where is that? Why can't I find it? Right, there it is. Okay, let's clear the way. Let's bring our guests back on. Hey, buddy. What's up, man? I took let's the hoodie on. off. Good. Yeah, it was, it was rubbing. <laughs> let's bring on Sid the Kid. What's up, Sid? What's up, guys? What up, Sticks? What's man? Up, Yo, Sid? It's good, Dude, man. it's been a while, bro. It's well, been a minute. Since April. I saw you in April. The show. Yeah, try. It's been longer than a minute. Right now. I got, it, I got it. I got it right behind me as a reminder that I'm still alive. You know. <laughs> yep. That was a hell of a show, man. That was one yep. of the best shows. We, we oh, all survived man. it. Oh my god, that that took me way back. It made me feel like the '80s. That show. It was incredible. Hey, Very Jimmy. incredible. Hey Jimmy, uh, Rich Copinger says I got to tell you, Jimmy, you've been an inspiration to so many on so many levels. Watching you pen lyrics on the couch and then sing them hanging from the rafters at cafe bar with so much heart and passion is burned into my brain for life. Set a standard for what a front man should be. Glad to see you and yours healthy and well. My man, Rich. Thanks, Rich, man. Re really appreciate it, bro. I've known you since a little, little, little youth. You know, some of these kids were like teenagers, you know. And it's awesome, man, just to be that inspiring to people and people to tell you that. Is, I respect that a lot. You know, it's awesome, man. Mr. I'm glad. Mr. It Mr. Let Go says, Stick, you remember the time Fury came up to New Hampshire with Earth Crisis? That shit went off the rails. Ha, 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 ha. A lot of it shows went, went off the off rails. rails. with you guys. <laughs> always, <laughs> always, always. I, I know we, we, we really served up some bouncers in New Hampshire at a show that <laughs> They, they, uh, poor New man. Hampshire. Like, why New, poor New Hampshire? Like, what the? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but we really, we really gave it to these dudes bad. They, they, they started beating up on some kid, and we just jumped uh, off the stage and just manhandled the whole thing. <laughs> but that's what we used to do. <laughs> we were unstoppable force, man, you know, and we always, we always rolled with mad heads, you know, so we were always, we were always ready to fight, always. Absolutely. Prepared for war. I'm still hey, prepared for war. <laughs> hey, Sid, let's do album of the week. All right. Yep. So and this, this one, guys, I just want to say really quick mm -hmm. get a cup of coffee because, and even Drew knew this. I told him the pre show. This is one of the longest things I really had to research. This is going to be no little two minute thing. There was All a right, lot. Relax, Skipper. Here we go. A lot Ladies to do. Gentlemen, boys and girls, album of the week. Boom! Okay. 36 chambers. All right, Sid. Let, 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 let's lean into it, Sid. Go ahead. All righty, guys. So 
You know, like I said this is going to be a long one, but it's worth it. Trust me. So, you know, this type of hardcore, you don't think of unless, you know, you're well versed in hip hop. And if you do, obviously, you know what this album is about. This is Wu-Tang's debut album entitled, <laughs> entitled Into the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers. It was recorded in late 1992 into mid-1993 with the release being, I believe, uh, November 9th of 1993. Uh, this was recorded over at Firehouse Studios and mastered at the Hit Factory as well as in New York, uh, being released on Loud Records and Obviously, RZA was the producer who put this one out. Now, obviously, the title might be a little weird to some people, but this basically originates from, you know, martial art films like Enter the Dragon and The 36th Chamber of Shaolin. Now, the gritty, distinctive sound of this album created a blueprint for hardcore hip hop during the 1990s and helped return New York City hip hop to its national prominence. You know, at that time, everybody was all about gangster rap, you know, West Coast, which, taking nothing away from that. But, you know, its sound also became greatly influenced in modern hip hop production, while the group's members explicit, humorous and free associate lyrics have served as a template for the many subsequent hip hop records that have that been coming out over the years. Serving as a landmark release in the era of hip hop known as the East Coast Renaissance, its influence helped lead to way like such artists as Nas. Notorious B.I.G., Mob Deep, and even Jay-Z at one point. The lyrics reach back to New York's own Rakim, like, you know, having, like, dense rhyme battles if you really listen to that record. Now, despite its raw underground sound, the album had a surprising chart success, peaking, I believe, at number 41 on the Billboard 200, uh, selling 30,000 copies within its first week. You know, it, that thing just, it just was, it snowballed. And even, um, you know, like I said, this is so much here, I'm trying to go, I'm not trying to go too long in this, Drew. There was a lot, a lot here, but I'm looking through one of the, uh, one specific, one specific uh, thing here that I really do got to talk about here. You know, Enter the Woo ushered in a new standard for hip hop at the time when hip hop music was dominated by jazz, jazz influenced styles like, you know, Tribe Called Quest, um, and even, in some some of the political issues you that protect public, your neck. You best protect your neck. <laughs> but even even some of the issues that Public Enemy was bringing up at the time, you know, Wu Tang brought definitely something different to the table compared to what was going on at the time. And uh, the best way I could put it is, when you listen to this album, it, you know, for somebody who lives anywhere but New York, it literally gives you that vision of what New York is really like, especially it, you know in 1992, 1993. For those who lived in New York. It wasn't exactly the best time to be living if you were like in certain parts of New York City at that at that time, you know. All right, so Clan well, ain't well, not the well, fuck with <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy, is this a record? Did did this uh, resonate with you? Uh, I'm not a big Wu fan. Sorry to say, I'm more of a Mob Deep fan. Like there you go. Mob Deep is very influential in my Fury of Five lyrical mm -hmm. format. You know. Um, I, I like the Woo. I like some of their hits, but like I, I couldn't listen to a whole album of the Woo. It just didn't move me like that. But it, it, I mean, I I think Jay Fury was into it, and he gave it. He is actually watching. He he said it in the comments. Somebody told me. So what's up, Jay Fury? I see you out there. Um, yeah. I mean, the Woo Tang Clan record, ain't man. This I ain't not the fuck with is a good yeah. song. I like Cream. You know. Uh, ice cream, you know, I, some of the uh, their solo stuff I like a little better, you know, like uh, Ray Kwan's record was good, Ghostface record was good, Meth is definitely good solo, but I, as an entire group, I, I didn't like all the all the all all the the rappers involved, you know. I loved it, man. I loved this record. Like R Jizza, that's Rizza or Jizza. I don't. Both who of did, them. Who, did Lick, and who did Liquid Swords? Jizza, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah that, yeah, that was good. That was good. Rizza, I don't like Rizza's flow at all. Like his, yeah. uh, he tries to be like a little over the top with his his words. You know, I don't know. Just I love this thing. record, man. Oh, this, like said, the, this, the record, this record really resonated for me, man. I loved it. It was, it, it, you know. I, I mean, it, a lot of people do love it, you know. Yeah. I, I don't hate it. It just right. wasn't my go-to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, know, I'm more of a DMX dude. Yeah, uh, right. My, my, my yeah, Z, I, I remember that. You love DMX. Him. I remember I loved, that. I still listen to DMX every day. Every day, DMX is, I get a song coming through 
uh, every friggin' album. Does <laughs> anybody love out there, hold on. Does anybody out there know where this picture is taken? Anybody out there? Take a guess. Someone, no, no, no Sid, not you. Um, does anybody know where that picture was taken? Because I have a tie-in. Uh, uh, did you mention who took the picture, Sid? Uh, actually, no. I, I tried looking up that, that research. I couldn't find it, surprisingly. That picture was taken by Daniel Hastings. Well, I'm uh, sure Dan it's in Staten Island somewhere, no? No. Dan no, Dan no, Daniel no, no, Hastings, no. Daniel Hastings, I worked with him. I actually produced a video for a guy named Fatal who who is in uh, with with um, uh, with Danny Diablo now in their group Spick. And I, I produced the Fatal video for for uh, I produced the Fatal video for the song Timber for Daniel Hastings uh, back when I had my music video run. Um, let me see if anybody got this. No, it's not in Philly. No, it's not the George Washington Bridge. No way. Even Shaolin I know that bridge. Like. It is under a bridge. Um, <laughs> it's definitely under a bridge. Yeah. Someone got it. I, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Here is, it is, is that where you did the Mad Bull video? No, but close. Uh, Queensbridge. Uh, yes, that is under the 59th Street. That is under, yes. Yes, Fred. Fred got it. Queen, Fred Fred from 25 to Life got it. Oh, they got it's, this on at the nursing home? It, it, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. They must have let him out. Now, now this bridge, this, here's an interest. This, this was a location that we used to use. We used to use this location a lot. And here is um, my brother... If you remember, my brother did the white trash video, and here's a clip from that in the same location. Dick. All right, wow. same spot, exact that was same terrible. spot. <laughs> yeah, I've never even heard of that man. What the hell was going oh, on there, Aaron bro? Aaron Collins, man, and his brother Ethan. That, that was the number one. That was the first Buzz Bin video on MTV. My brother directed it. Yeah, I've never seen that, dude. Yeah, white trash, bro. All right, it looked Sid. like it. <laughs> well, wait, wait, go, but, Sid. One thing I did want to mention, guys. I mean, obviously, if you have heard the record, the one thing I did want to point out out of anything that really resonates with me on this record, besides the lyrical content, is those drums. Obviously, bass and drums are the, the cornerstone of hip hop, but mainly those drums are so loud for the fact that as loud as it is, it doesn't drown out anything else. It mixes well with with how everyone's like doing their thing. Right. That's the one thing that stuck out to me, even like on the first track. You All know? right, Sid, I'll talk to you later. Thank All you. All right, take care, guys. Well, well done. All right. There we go. Uh, you know what? We it, it was between it was between DMX and Woo. And I was like, you know what? We'll go with Woo. We should we should have went with Oh, DMX. you went with DMX all day. I know, man. I know. You were the first one that played this DMX in the in a van going to I a was? show. Yes. You had I'm a CD you, I'm and you, glad you have a memory. Yes, yes, you were you had a CD. You, you got it from somebody. You said, Oh, you gotta hear this DMX guy. Oh, that's right. They gave it to me at Def Jam. Yes. I had, they gave it to me. They like yes. a, a, a pre cop like Yes, a, a, before it even came out. We played the shit out of that. Yes. I have never stopped playing the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's my ringtone on my phone if you call me right now. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, so let's let's um before you know you know what let's let's veer off because let's veer off on this a second. Give me give me a word on you know and, and we'll circle back to Fury. We'll we'll circle back to Fury of Five. But tell us about Box Cutter for the for the uninitiated. This is like there's not a lot of photos of you guys. Of box cutter, tell oh, us. The about, hair is crazy, though. Tell Jesus. us about box cutter. Who was in it, and what was the project about? Uh, well, uh, around, I think maybe like the end of oh one or oh two, Richie Kutch had gotten in touch with me, and I give mad props to Rich. He's kept me involved in music since the breakup of Fury of Five, mm -hmm. and uh, he had these songs that he wanted me to sing on, but I 
at that time in my life, I didn't think that I could uh, outdo myself. At, at, I was in Fury of Five. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> where do you go from there? Yeah, exact, dude. This is what this is what the depression was all about. You know, and uh, I'm like, this was the best thing that I could ever do. You know, so he gave me these tracks. And I told him, I said, listen, I have this idea for a band, a rap metal band. Uh, I want to call it Rusty Shankholder, but he didn't, he didn't like the name. I got the name from Mob Deep. They say he didn't want the raps. So um, they didn't really like the name, but he let me, he gave me the freedom to put it all together. And uh, we changed the name to Box Cutter. And I called the style Thug Rock because, you know, it was metal plus, you know, rappy. And uh, I, I wrote the first, the EP, Thug Rock. I wrote all, all the material lyrically and arranged it. And we went with it and people liked it. So we went with another, uh, we went to do a full length. Some, they wanted to put out a, somebody wanted to put out a full length. I don't know who, who the and, lady And who was. were the initial members? It was uh, Richie Crutch, Majo, uh, Majo from Wisdom and Chains. Uh, Chris Mahmood from Out to Win and Mushmouth, and now he's got a new band called uh, Carry by Six. They just dropped uh, some new music out there, so check that out. Um, uh, Sean Battle, he was the drummer. He was in Crutch and uh, Chris uh, Mathematics uh, from Wisdom and Change was in the beginning, and then things changed here and there afterwards. But that was that was the original members of, of the box cutter you know got it and do, do you you guys did a little tour of europe right oh i forgot peppy was in the band he he came in after he played bass so right. uh, chris left chris was wrote some stuff and then he was out so i, I forgot who replaced him on guitar i don't uh oh yeah i i think chris did uh chris mahmoud yeah, I don't remember now. <laughs> hey, I want to shout out Gary. I want to shout out Gary speaking of Jersey. What's up, Gary? Old One of my old street bike guys, man. Represent. Good to see you, man. Yeah. So you, you guys did a couple shows. That you guys did play in Europe, right? No, we played. Oh, yeah, we did play. We played uh, the Bringing Back the Glory uh, Festival, which was phenomenal for Box Cutter because we never even really played. Anywhere we played one show in Jersey, and then uh, we played one show in Canada, which Canada, Canada said that I'd never been there. They wouldn't let me in with twenty five to life. Uh, we had to turn around at the border, um, and then we played uh, in Germany, bringing back the Glory Fest, which was amazing. It was an amazing show. I I couldn't believe people liked Box Cutter that much. That's cool. That's a nice feeling, huh? No, it was awesome. Like you know. It was it was packed. Everybody knew the words. People were into it. It was crazy. It was just crazy. But we only played like three times. So what what is what was the inspiration, the motivation behind Fury of Five? Uh, you doing the Fury of Five thing in two thousand fifteen? Fourteen. I did it original. I did it originally in two thousand ten. What on on the notion that nobody had any care for the band anymore mm -hmm. but obviously i found out that they did you know and maybe i was wrong for not asking i just assumed and i went to do fury of five in 2010 and um it caused a big a big thing even on the internet and i was bumping heads with people and like rich was like yo you gotta say something you know and uh so it went from fury of five to the fury jam and it was uh, this dude, Dave, that was in the two, 2014 version. Um, Doc from God Forbid. Uh, Soda on drums. And uh, who else is in that? Oh, Chris Mahmood uh, played. Uh, is the is that the Jam. lineup that played Tsunami Fest? Yeah, the first Tsunami Fest. Yeah, that was that uh, was off the hook, huh? That that was it was amazing. I mean, I, 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 I even brought my son out. He did a he did a rap in Box Cutter, and he did that live. And it was it was awesome. I mean, just the you know Fury Five broke up in '98 to come back in 2010, and still people still wanted wasn't 
uh, humbling to me, you know, like, you know, like, you know, I put my heart into that band, like literally, like whatever I wrote, I, I felt, I meant, you know what I mean? If I said it, I really, really meant it from the heart and, and to see people gravitate to it like that was just, just, just humbling, you know? And then we did it again in 2014 and Mike Terry was on board to do it. He tried to get Chico. He didn't want to do it. And then uh, I was like, fuck this. I'm doing it because I had just met my other son in 2010. So I wanted to show him what I was about. This is what I did most of my life, blah, blah, blah. So I had both of my sons on stage, you know, and, uh, you know, those guys did an amazing job. Shout out to Derek. Derek's got a band called Bushuda Code. And it's amazing, you know. They, oh, he's in. Oh, he's in that band. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh I didn't man, make the dude. connection. Yeah. yeah. So Derek, that band's, he, yo, that band's hard, yo. Yo, they're great, great. You know, shout out to Mike with that. That's my family. You know, they, they, yeah, they, uh-huh. really, I love that record, dude. It's right on my alley. It's so metal. So yeah, got yeah. like a uh, death influence. It, it's great. I got. Uh, I got to get him on the show, man. I, I like that band, man. And. uh uh, who uh my, my my man Sean played bass, uh Dave on guitar. He was in the 2000 ver uh, 2010 version. Soda was in the 2010 version, and uh, that that show in 2014, Fury Five, w- was just amazing to me. Just over the top, you know. It was way way uh I can't even explain to you. Uh, what was the way nice it was to- perceived? How they like like just the energy and the and the response. It wasn't like in the '90s, but just the people were into it in the in their the new way that they do it. <laughs> so like uh, you know yeah. when we did take and respect, and the whole entire place said it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. And I was like, wow, wow, this is 2014. You know, like we started in. 1994 this is 20 years later i'm playing a show and people are singing this like it's the 90s to me you know like was it was just a good feeling so how how did these how did these 10 show did you go did you go over to europe once these 10 shows in two yeah we went we how did that go i i I made a mistake with this tour shit happens uh, (laughs) yeah you know i would you know I'm a BFL dude. I went through a BFL dude over there, and I thought it was going to be a good a good thing. thing and it, it turned out to be a terrible tour. And Hoya had offered me their tour, but I already told him that I already had one set. He wanted me to do the Rebellion tour, you know? And I, <laughs> I have heavy regrets. That is definitely one that yeah. I should have, you know what I mean? But, you know, it is what it is, It you know. And, you know, I don't talk to this dude no more. You know, he's still a BFL guy, but he's dead to me. And, um, you know, he really fucked this. I had to come out of my pocket to pay the band. And uh, I lost a lot of money on it. And it was just, I got real sick on the tour where I got quarantined in Finland. Like, I, I, they wouldn't... Re- I seem to remember that, that you got real sick. Yeah, I got like really got real re- sick. Yeah, I probably had the COVID then. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. Like I I mean like literally like like passed out in the airport. Like I don't even remember collapsing, woke up in a shows, pool of sweat. And you did all 10 of those shows? No, I had a I I I opted out of one just to rest right. and then I I did the remaining. Like I in Finland when we st- I laid down all day. I could not move. I got on stage, I hit my first notes, and next thing I know, I was looking up at the band from the floor. I don't even know how I got there. Damn, man. Yeah, and then some dude was pissed off in the crowd, and I was I only played like four songs. I had to get off stage. I, I couldn't do it. You know, I didn't have the strength. Oof. You know, you, there's a picture of me with my, my London family, and I look like a ghost. Like, I look dead, like a spirit just floating in the picture. So you know? did you put it, you put it, so did you, uh, hey, Mike Terry, what's up? There he is. What's up, Mike? Mike, Mike. Mike Terra. And don't worry, Mike, we're going to get, we're going to get, eventually on the show, we're going to get to the what's up with the original Fury of Five reunion. You better believe it. So <laughs> um, 
So did you put it to bed after that? Was the Fury of Five put to bed after that? Well, oh. No, I, it couldn't have been because we, we played no. with you a couple of years ago. Or was that was it then? I don't remember. No, that was the same. That was uh, Auto yeah. Auto or whatever Oneonta. it was. Oneonta. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah. disaster. That was, that was a, I mean, it was all right for us, kind of. Yeah. There was nobody there, though. You know what I mean? That was, that was a trip. That but was I, weird, man. I, I had fun. It was cool. Yeah, you know? I saw you when I saw you. That was the first time in many years. Yeah. Yeah, that, I think that was the last show we played. Yeah, I believe you know. Yeah. But uh, with, with that was you know like the the writing, the writing wasn't where I needed it to be. Not mm -hmm. that these guys couldn't write; they're fucking phenomenal uh, musicians. But like they couldn't get the my vibe. You know, we wrote one song called "Real Is Back," and it was close to to a fury type vibe but other than that we we couldn't really get on all on the same page you know sure. but obviously you can see Derek's uh writing style and Bushuda code is just next level metal you know what I mean like fury is kind of a little more dialed back we're metal but not like over the top you know yep we're more uh, rhythm rhythmatic hip-hop vibe and you know before we take a break and uh, my last sponsor break, and we'll come back and take questions. Let's let's talk about this real quick. Let's 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 have a word on you fronting uh, twenty five to life. How did that come about? <laughs> well, <laughs> I I saw uh, Seth had made a post about looking for a singer for twenty five to life, and I was like, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Not it wasn't like it wasn't like uh listen, me and Rick, we have never got along from way back. It goes way back. It just it's not it's not a 25 to life thing. You know what I mean? I, I don't like Rick. Rick don't like me. We're Fury of Nerds, he's dick to lips, you know what I mean? Whatever. Uh, you know, I try not to even entertain that dude anymore. I know he's got yeah. some, some mental sickness, so I yeah, I don't even entertain it. He comes on my comments, I get rid of him. But yep. this all transpired. Like we all, like we all do. Yeah, I mean, you entertain them, you keep them relevant. I, I just, yeah. I just ignore them. I ain't got time for that. That kid. I'm 53 years old. I ain't trying to. You want to see me? Come see me. You know, what I mean, I took your band. You did nothing about it. So, right. you know, you know, Seth put a post up. I said I'll do it. You know, I, I love Fred. Fred's my homie. And Beto. Beto, Beto, that's my family. Yeah, they're all Mike Kinzer. You, they're my people, you know. So like, why wouldn't I do it? You know, I had to do the homework. I had to study the lyrics. You know, I couldn't make out what he was doing. I really did homework. I mean, earbuds, taking notes. What I think he said this. And keep on like, you know. And I and I, I got it. You know what I mean. Some people didn't like it. Some people liked it. You know what I mean. It's not for everybody. But Beto and I always thought that we should change the name of the band because it's not 25 to life no more, to be honest with you. It had the sounds to it, but not, you know, my vocals brought a different yeah. vibe to it. So, you know, we were trying to get him to go as mess. But, you know, Fred's seen now and he, he don't want to listen to nobody. <laughs> so, you know, he, he didn't like, he didn't want to use his own name, you know, which would have tied kept it tied together you know 25 the light you know fred everybody's fred mess fred mess you know everybody knows mess you know i think it would have worked you know but he he didn't want to do that you know he's still searching for those riffs though you, you can see him on facebook every once in a while in the nursing home you know playing his guitar <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so but, but that, that's group. been put to, the 25 to life thing's been put to bed right uh, not necessarily i mean like you know, it all de depends if they if they're right material. You know. Yeah. I mean, we the old material is easy to do. You know, we we already done that. You know, we wrote three songs with me, and uh, they seem. I mean, we played in Europe. We got flown over for a festival, and uh, people were loving the new songs. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you did know. you play? This is hardcore. Yeah, yeah, that was our first show back. Yeah. I mean, the first show with me singing for 25 to life, yeah, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, and it, and it was me doing it wasn't to, you know, slap Rick in the face. I was doing it because I was doing it with my friends and they wanted yeah. to, they wanted to do it. It was more personal 
for them to do it because they have history with the band. You know what I mean? So well, it is you know. a shame in a certain way that that band did so much work. Uh, puts those those guys like Beto and Fred put so much work in that band, you know, and then to have you know they still they they own part of that legacy. They yes, should be able to. Yes, well, that was be, that, They should that, be able to, you know, go on. I mean, that, that, that was that was what Seth's deal was. He didn't want to be part of the Rick downfall of it you know the the ridicule and the laughter and the yeah that's the, right you know, rr rr you know like people yeah, making yeah. fun of it you know because right. it did did have its place in hardcore history for sure yes. you yeah. know what i mean you couldn't play a show without 25 to life being somewhere you yeah. know what i mean they were on every flyer you were you know fury played with 25 many a times because of our connection with beto and yeah. fred yeah. And, and and guys it wasn't necessarily rick you know, it was the other guys, you know, Rick was always doing his own thing. He was always into his own selfish, selling his uh, distro, his records, his flea market merch. Shit. you know what I mean? He was, he didn't care about anything, but making that, that money, you know, yeah. but you can't be mad at that because you need to make a living. So, but don't pretend to be keeping it real when you're not, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it is what it hey, is. Hey, speaking, speaking of, um, I want to, speaking of, kind of new bands. Let's talk about this this a little bit. Put in the gap! That's what we're talking about! you getting in there with the kids huh yeah it's awesome man awesome what, and let me tell you that was probably one of the hardest songs i ever had to write because it's so <laughs> positive i really really <laughs> really like you know i try to capture what they want it to be you know what uh -huh. i mean like lyrics you know youth crew like that's not me you know what i mean yeah I'm on the brutal side of things, hurting people, pain, <laughs> violence, blood, you know? So like I had to sit down and really like put it together when Caden gave me the song. But like when I first heard the demo and they did the side by side cover and I was uh -huh. like, wow, these kids get it, you know? And they're awesome. I mean, they're going through some transitional phase right now. Uh -huh. And I don't know why it all transpired. I think it's really stupid, but they're all right. They, they got they, they're all right. They got the, they got they're the band. Good. The band's got so much push, and the best thing about it is that they all have a hardcore parent. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, Every Beto, single one of them. about Beto. Beto's sons in the band. You know, that's right? Cool. It's crazy. Uh, Kevin, uh, Craig's uh, you, Kevin Craig. The, Kevin Craig is his daughter's in the band, right? That's my homie from way back. That's right. Way back. That's right. Way back. Me and Kevin got mad history. The drummer, Kevin, his dad was second to none. You know, right. Gene, you know, that's my other brother. You know, like, that's you know, cool. uh, Rupus and uh, Rupa yeah, right. and uh, the, the girl. I don't really know them that well, but I, I know their parents have something to do with hardcore. Yeah, yeah. You know? Lenny, Rupa's dad is Lenny and, you know, Rupa, Rupa. And Alex aren't in the band anymore, but the band, the band right. is they're playing, they're playing 
I'm we're, we're playing with them on a week from today. No, it's man. it's great, man. And they got yeah. a lot of a lot of people loving them and and yeah. a lot of knowledge to back them and give them the advice that they need to not mess it up, you know. Yeah. But it was awesome, like to do that song for those guys. You know, like you know me being who I am and my age and where they are. We're like. Caden's still a teenager. Some of these kids are still – most of them are teenagers. What am I kidding? You know, it was just good to see, like, two different eras of hardcore come together. You know what I mean? It's, like, That's really, right. really dope. Really dope. Yeah, they're on the A7 comp that we uh, – reaching outs on the A7 comp that we did. Yeah. And I wouldn't do – honestly, I, I, I wouldn't do it. Like all this A7 show, all the, I wouldn't do it if if it wasn't all ages and the kids couldn't do it because I'm not interested in old timers day, man. Nah. That shit's a bore, man. Yeah, yeah. They don't, old timers don't get down like us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have too many old timers diving off the stage anymore, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's, let me take my last break and let's come back and let's take some questions from around the world, okay? All right, no doubt. All right, here we go. What's happening? It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Our guest is James. Stickman Raymond from Fury of Five, Box Cutter, and 25 to Life. Get your questions ready. Let's have some fun with it. It is Shout Out Sunday, so don't be shy. Let it fly. We are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, the Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chacho's Tacos, Generation Records, and right here in La Ciudad de Nueva York, Organic Grill. It's a vegan restaurant located in East Village, New York City at 1, 2, 3, First Avenue, featured in New York Magazine, New York Times, and the infamous Veg News. The dishes have won numerous awards, including Goddamn, Goddamn Electric, Best Veggie Burger. They make their own cheeses, sausages, and burger patties, and every dish on the menu could be made gluten-free. This year, they're celebrating their 21st anniversary, 21st, the 21st. They're celebrating their 21st anniversary, and they're all about having a great time while enjoying amazing clean food. They have now fully reopened for business and look forward to seeing you, you gluten-free motherfucker. Get in touch with them. Order some great food at www.theorganicgrill.com. Last but not least, our man Josh at Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, located in Lakewood, Colorado, is the Rocky Mountain headquarters for all things punk, hardcore, and Believe it or not, metal. Established in 2014, the year, the year of our Lord, 2014, they have the largest selection of records, CDs, shirts, stickers, patches, and accessories between Chicago and Los Angeles. Goddamn electric. From the pit to the ditch, they got their back. They got your back. It's bananas. Get in touch with them at www.chainreactionrecords.com. All right. One more time. I want to mention the Patreon page. Please support. Please support the show. The support need the support needs your show. The show needs your support. Don't be shy. Come on. I want to shout out a couple new patrons. Denise LeBeau, Nicholas Frazier, Marty, Senzo, who I went to high school with, and Michael Reed. Thank you for, for contributing. Uh, got some big news coming up soon for all you patrons. Everybody that's in as a patron is in for something special pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to be announcing it a little bit down the line, but goddamn electric. Everybody who's a patron, something great is coming your way. I will tell you that. For It means a lot. We are the GFM, the GFM furs, the gluten-free motherfuckers. Yeah, man. Shout out to Pantera. Goddamn electric. Yes, he is a scaffold builder. That is what it is. We went through this already. You're tuning in late. He's a scaffold guy. I wonder if, wonder if there's a, what the proper, hey, Ack, don't, hey, thank you, Ack. And don't worry, your antidote extend, antidote NYHC extended test pressings on the way. All right. Uh, let's get some questions together. Um, hey, listen, Keith, be a patron, do it now. Cause I'm going to be, I'm going to be giving something free to all the patrons and it's dope. Um, there it is. Don't be shy. There's the Patreon page. Just support the damn show. Will you? God damn electric. Um, 
post questions for Stickman. Let me see. Am I forgetting every anything? We did Michael Graves needs a guitar player and a keyboard. The show's dedicated to the spirit of Tony Minardi. I love you. I love you, Gabe. Um, first Barry Electric show is this Sunday. It's free. Come on down. Uh, there's a super chat. You can contribute to the show that way. Costs a couple bucks. Um, here we go. Let's bring let's bring Jimmy back on. Hey, bro. What's up, man? Hey, listen. Can I just talk about something real quick? Yes, of course. That's what I'm, we're here for. All right. <laughs> I'm involved in a project. You posted it this morning called Mask Up. It's a super group, a bunch of bunch of uh, people from different bands, Lionheart and uh, yep. uh, I forget all the bands. I know they just dropped a song called Rage of the Dying Light with Chris from Shadow Realm, which is really dope. So go check that out. So it's up, uh, Upstate Upstate Records. Yeah, I think it's Upstate Records. Uh, I released it. They have a lyric video. Check it out. It's really dope. Yeah, I, I just po I posted it today on the New York Hardcore Chronicles page. Yeah, yeah, it's a good song, man. Chris from Shadow Realm, he he kills it. It really, really, really dope. I hope my song comes off like that too. <laughs> you know, I did I posted, a song called "In Our Blood." Page, I posted it on the page because of the name of the band. People started carrying on about the whole vaccine thing and blah 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 blah. And like, dude had to chime in and be like, "Yo, that has nothing to do with the name of the yeah. band," you know. We used to ski mask up all the time. I know, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah, you can go watch the old Fury videos, people jumping off with ski masks at the Stone Pony into the crowd, feet first, wilding out, you know? But, uh, you know, people right. are, uh, you know, people live in fear now. It's weird. Let's you get know? down with Chucky Brown. Can he speak on lyrics he wrote for Fury of Five that are still relevant to this day? Tracks like Wake Up America, Out of Jurisdiction, and Hell on Earth? They're all relevant, you know. Listen, I I don't want to really get into politics because you know everybody has a side and has their own views. But I, me, I'm an independent conservative, and uh, Wake Up America is. We need that right now. There is no common sense anymore, and people just can't think for themselves, and they're just being washed by the government, man. Just like being played, like. Like, really, it's been two years. The population's still growing. Everybody thinks the world is dying. I don't understand. Hell on Earth touches ground on that. Out of jurisdiction is about police brutality. I've been talking about that for years, you know. It's crazy, man. I got a song called Running in Fear. That's what people are doing right now. <laughs> so a lot of Fury lyrics, if you listen to them, you're like, wow, that's what's happening right now, you know. Not that I'm some kind of prophet or something, but <laughs> it, but it's been going on for years, and now it's just now they just developed a way through your phones and the internet to control your mind and just pump things constantly. You know, my wife tells me, "Get off the fucking phone. You're driving yourself nuts." Because I pay too much attention to the dumb shit. Yeah, you know, yeah, I true. even stopped making political posts, and I don't even talk political. I just talk common sense which seems like nobody has anymore, you know? What is a mask doing? Like, really, what is a mask doing? It's like underwear it's stop. People feel, it's making people feel better. That's, you know. Listen, that, if that makes I, you I, feel better, then don't worry about me. I feel fine. You know what I mean? I'm a healthy individual. Like I said, you can see behind me the Mad Bull show sit there like a trophy because I was at that show and people were saying, oh, they're super spreaders. They're all going to be dead next week. It's September. I'm still here. You know? Here's one Here's one from Paulie. I saw Fury of Five once in 96 at the Wetlands in New York City. It was Fury, Hatebreed, Maximum Penalty, H2O, and Agnostic Front. Any memories of that show and or Wetlands? Yes, the Wetlands was awesome. I think we played yeah. there twice. Wetlands I remember, were, I, I, that's when we were working together, man. You guys, yeah, you guys crushed it there. Yeah, man. that show was off the hook. Fucking crushed you know? it. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Uh, yeah, playing live was our thing. We yeah. we were better live than on record. You know, like we because you got the visual of the authentic rage that we displayed. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You could see that. Yo, these dudes are not playing. You know, look. You can just see it in my face. I look at some of those pictures like, wow, that dude was mad. 
what were you mad about, bro? <laughs> what the fuck are you so mad about? You know, because I ain't that mad no more. You know, I smile now, you know, got a pretty smile now, you know, it's different. Things are different. I'm bougie. You know, you gotta let the money change you, bro. <laughs> I put up I put up some some footage from from you guys playing wetlands recently. You know? Yeah, how about wet- that? I fa- I had all that footage. Yo, like this. Remember, hold on. I got how about this? Oh, that's in the studio. Yeah, yeah. Danny Locke. Telephone's ringing. Here you go. It's the Normandy fucking guitar room. Yeah, we recorded two records there. Graffiti. That was the spot, man. Boricua, boricua, that was definitely the spot. You, you, I remember, I have all, kind, all footage of us up in there, man. We almost got thrown out of there. <laughs> I can't, I feel like I'm right there. I was up yes, there so was. many yes, times, I man. I was up there like so. five times with bands, man. <laughs> yeah. I still do that. I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, angry. What song is this? Uh, this is a fucking to live with in the lies. Oh, that was off of this time is personal. We were recording this time is personal. Right. Do you remember that dude behind the board? You remember him? Yeah, Jamie Locke. Oh, is it Jamie Locke? That's Jamie Locke. Oh, I thought it was Tom Suarez. No, no, that's Jamie Locke. Yo, look at that OG computer sitting there, bro. That Yo, they got, we're recording reel to reel in there. Yeah. Look at the size of that board. Yo, that was a big show, bro. Oh, that was that was that your was, hometown show, right? Is that one? Uh, Wait, that yeah, was the last yeah. time you guys played, right? Uh, uh no, I, I think it we was played two. We played we played convention hall twice. Is that the main stage? I can't really tell. Yeah. Yeah. some good stuff man yeah man <laughs> absolutely wow yeah that was great good i know there's a video uh, uh, michael gibbons michael gibbons says uh jamie was the assistant to tom yeah okay yeah and you guys went and decided to go on with with with, with jamie yeah that's right i remember uh, evan came out and sang with us uh, at, at that yeah. that show that one yep. show we did the biohazard cover that was awesome. Oh, my, oh, my own. own. Yeah, I got yeah. that. Hey, let's um know that that wasn't Europe. That wasn't Europe, Jay. That was that was uh Asbury Park. Um let let's uh let's address this head on. Since so much has changed in your life, is there any possibility of a fury reunion with the OG lineup, or is that unthinkable? Well, it's not unthinkable. Um we're in the works. We're working on it, and uh, you know, this time all, all all original members have been asked, and and uh, Jay's on board, Mike's on board, Chico's on board, Chris, he doesn't want to do it. He has his reasons. It's understandable. I mean, I wish he would reconsider. You know, it would be, you know, he he's part of the history. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of it? It is what it is. I mean, even if you don't like me, you could still do it and go back to hate me. It is what it is. He don't want to do it. So uh, I just got hit up this week by my man, Joe Stanley from departed. And, uh, he, uh, 
said he got a drummer that wants to do it. So I sent out um, the set list and we're going to see what happens, you know. So hopefully uh, we can get it popping and, uh, you know, be the closure that we all need to, to you know, say goodbye, really. Really, it's a, it's a, it would be say goodbye, you know. Like I always wanted to do five records for Fury of Five. <laughs> obviously that's not going to happen and uh but if you count the two seven inches and the three full lengths it is five records so but i wanted to do five full lengths didn't work out but you know i i want to i want to give the fans a real real authentic fury show this day and age you really need it like that show that just happened in, in thompson square park that was needed you know what I mean? I think a, a Fury of Five show in Asbury Park is definitely needed. And I think it would be a really, really dope thing. And, and people would vibe and really be like, wow, these guys were the deal. You know? I feel good about it. I think I think you could do it, man. I, you know, if, if Jay's in and Mike's in, you know, and Chico's in, it's like, yo, you'll get a drummer and you'll do it, man. Pe people... People want it, man. You know, sometimes in this life, you can go back. Yes. It's nice to go back, but touch it and keep it moving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I can't do it full time. I have other commitments now in my not. life. You know what of I mean? Not. Like, I, I'm, a, you know, I got a job. I got a wife. You know, we, we just bought a new house. We love where we live. So, you know, we're, we're, we're you know. We're, we're going to next levels, you know, like just progressing. That's what you're supposed to do in life. You can't be idle. You can't live in the past. If you live in the past, you're not doing anything. You're not going to where you can place it and you're just going to die like that. I'm living my life every day through this bullshit, COVID, whatever. I go out. I do what I want to do. I buy what I want to buy. I live. That's what you're supposed to do. You Absolutely. know what I mean? If you're living in fear, then you're not living, you know? Chucky I don't look, Brown. you just Go gotta ahead. live, man. Absolutely. Chucky Brown, can you speak on when Fury of Five was on tour with VOD and Earth Crisis in early 98? I believe their bus got broken down in Indiana, down the road from Victory Records, and they didn't bother to help the band. This is facts. Is that right? Um, this is facts. We were on the second, uh, we were going into the second week of the tour and uh, we were going to Chicago to play the House of Blues in our van. We blew an engine. We got one. And Chris was a great mechanic. He he did work right there. We bought another engine for like 500 bu bucks. He threw it in. And, and then that one blew. And we were stuck in uh, Lafayette, uh, Ill uh, Illinois. For a while, right? If I remember now, for like you were stuck for like a yeah, week. Yeah, we were stuck. I mean, I I, I had uh, Jordan's mother wire me money so we can take bus. Me and Jay left, and then the band was mad at us for doing that. And then Chico's mom and, and people were pissed that we left. But I had band anxiety. I couldn't stay at that time in my life. You know what I mean? Like I was on the like the verge of like going to the hospital and can't breathe i was bugging out from anxiety all the time so i had to go you know yeah. and uh i think uh sean edison came all, all the way from jersey with a wrecker and picked up the van and it it was crazy bro like we were right there we were in illinois you know and tony victory did nothing nothing at all you know what i mean we were stuck in the van sleeping in the van we eventually got a room for a couple of days, and but then we left. I left. I had to go. You know, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, right? <laughs> Jesus, man, that, that that's. But it, it was it was going well. Like the it was it was a good tour up until that point. You know what I mean? Like we were on the on the verge of this growing. The fan base was growing and growing. You know. Let's talk about this a little bit. Let's talk about your love. For, that's my love. That's yeah. my that's my solitude right there. That's where I go. And, and I follow serenity. you. I follow you on Instagram, and I see like you know you, you do this you, every day. You show like the root, and it's just like holy shit, man! Like fucking, you do a yeah, lot. Yeah, I'm actually I'm, I'm actually doing a uh, this month is cancer awareness for for St. Jude, 
and uh, I saw the challenge, 150 miles. I said, hey, I'll do it. I already raised uh, almost $750, you know. I'm going to do it for the whole month now. I was just going to do it until I reached my mile goal, but I'm just going to keep it going until the whole month is over. But, yeah, I, I ride every day. I love it. It, 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 it keeps me at peace. It gets rid of the voices and the, and the, the demons that want to destroy me from the inside. You know what I mean? It's crazy, bro. But it's true. You know, and everybody's got voices, you know, that, you know, just want to just be destructive. And Bobby, uh, Bobby Hedrick says, how many bikes does he have? I have right now at the moment I have, um, I have a gravel bike, a road bike. I have a down country bike. I have an Enduro bike, I have a downhill bike, and then I got a park bike, and I got a dirt jumper. So, and then Jen, you know, I bought her engagement bike, so she's got a little uh, Enduro bike, and she's got a gravel bike as well. And, uh, yeah, I ride all the time. I got trainers. Um, I pedal, you know. It, 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 my endurance is through the roof. I, I mean, I did, like, 30-something uh, miles today, like an hour and 45 minutes, you know. Just cruising. My average speed was a eighteen point eight miles an hour or something, you know. But it's uh, it's a, it's a good hobby. I I I, I, try, I try to get a lot of people into it because if you if you have an addictive personality, it's a great outlet. You know what I right. mean? And and sure. and it, it and it's and, a healthy outlet. Yeah, it's healthy if you're into challenges, you know, and like overcoming things and fears and going up, you know, uphill is harder than going down. And sometimes down is technical like this. And, and your focus is always right. What's right in front of you. So you can't think about nothing. You can't get on a mountain bike and do this climb. That's like, say like a half mile of a hundred, a thousand feet of elevation. You're not going to be like, Oh, my life sucks. You're like, either you're going to be out of breath trying to figure out how you're going to finish or you're just going to quit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and the same thing going down, you'll come to a drop, a big jump or whatever. And you're not going to be like, Oh, my wife is cheating on me. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to, yeah. you're going to be, it, it, the focus is so, and your mind gets so clear. And then when you're done, you can rationally figure things out. Like I'm a different person at work when I ride and when I don't ride and everybody can tell when, Oh, he didn't ride today. Or you know what I mean? Like, do you, you know, do you ride a street bike these days? No, but I, I want to get another one. And that bike was fast as fuck. That was a BMW S1000 double R yeah, or just the R, nice, just the R. And, uh, that was a 2011, got a brand new and, uh, right out the box, that bike, We'll do a whole 186, which that's all it's allowed, but it felt like it could go more than that, <laughs> you know. But, uh, you know, I had a friend, a good friend die, my man Jay, demon, rest in peace. Um, after he died, it made me, like, really think, you know, how reckless we were riding at times, you know. Like, you know, we ride. You, you got fish. jammed up a little bit on, uh, on the bike, huh? Yeah, I caught a looting charge in 2011. A looting? eluding yeah um we were riding some back roads and uh state trooper was squatting on riders i'm assuming and he came out almost clipped me i was at 120 he passed me so i eventually found out the magnum police car can do 150 and so can their lowered trucks when you see the state trooper trucks that are lowered they do a buck 50 as well but that's as fast as they go that's what he told me and uh he blocked the road I was the last bike when he got, to, there was five of us. When he got to the third bike pulling keys, I took off. He ran out into the street. I just gunned it. He tried to clothesline me off the bike. I got home. New Jersey so, cops don't fuck around, man. You know, by, by six o'clock, there was a cops at my door with a warrant. I just turned myself in. You know, I was looking at five, five years was, uh, what I was looking at, but it all got uh, downgraded to the original charge, which it should have been. So if you pull off at a, from a traffic stop, it's only a disorderly person. Technically. I don't know. Uh, I have, I have a cousin that was a lavalette sergeant down by seaside and I called him right away and I told him what I did. He said, well, that should only be disorderly persons because you pulled off from a traffic stop. But you know, I got overcharged on a, 
on it. My my final charge after going to court with a lawyer and all that was disorderly persons. But because of my previous uh, criminal record, they gave me probation. That's my friend Tim's bike. Yo, uh, you love, I love the smile on your face. <laughs> <laughs> like, that thing, that thing looks, wow. What is that, a triumph? Uh, I don't remember. It has, it, I think it has a Kaufman, uh, Kaufman um, yeah. That thing looks uh, gnarly. Gas man. tank. Yeah. I think he got rid of it. I haven't talked to Tim in a minute, but yeah. yeah it's he, called felon, fel, felony eluding, right? That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was felony eluding. Yeah. But, but tech, that's what they charged me with. But it was original charge should have been disorderly persons. And that's what I got in my final charge when it was with the lawyers and all that. And I got a year of probation because of my record. But, you know. Even yes. at I was forty five, you, you know the yeah. hard headed, the hard headed never learn, bro. <laughs> yeah, but that's why. Old, but this is yeah. why I ride because of those decisions in those moments where you you can fuck your life up, man. Those are the voices in in your head. You know what I mean? Yeah. That could happen at any time. It could have happened at work last week. You know what I mean? I could have lost my job on a, a, a certain incident that happened. You know, mm -hmm. these are the voices that come. You know, and and. This is why I ride as much as I do because it clears everything. And then, I'm, and then I'm mostly chill, you know. And when you ride to the level that I ride at, you just want to go to take a nap or just relax anyway. You know what I mean? Because you just physically beat yourself up so bad that you don't want to do anything else but just relax, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I would recommend it to anybody that has uh, addiction issues, you know, like, you know, it, it's a positive one. You know, that's what people need to do is take the negative and turn it into a positive. And that's where I'm, this is the business that I'm working on. And, and I kind of got a structure and hopefully now where I live in Atlantic Highlands, I can make it happen because I have trails right behind my backyard and I want to help when, people. When I see that on, on, on Instagram, is that through streets or through trails? Sometimes it's through trails. If it's green, it's through trails. If it's, I see. You know what I mean? The the heavy green stuff is trails, you know, and the rest of the road. To like this morning one that I posted was road. I used to use a camera a lot, but I, I don't I don't really fuck with the camera no more, you know. I just like to, you know, some people are influenced by that, you know, seeing me doing the thing, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I got half my company riding bikes. One of my owners bought a bike off me, and I hooked my, my, my workers up. Because they're my family, so I hook them up with deals. You know, like they, even my friend Mike said the other day, he's like, "Yo, the dude said you got a, you gave me a deal." I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely." You know, I ain't trying to rip nobody off. If you have a desire to want to push yourself in a positive direction and do a positive thing, I'm gonna try to look you out. I'm gonna try to rip you off. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I already got my money's worth out of it. If I can bless somebody, that's what I do now. I don't, you know, I, I, I rather give you know what i mean like even me riding for charity i feel awesome about it because i'm i feel like i'm doing something for these kids that really need it you know everybody's worried about children wearing a mask but every day children die from cancer and nobody cares you know what i mean but they got these kids handcuffed in in the school with a fucking diaper around their mouth it makes no sense you know let me ask you this um and i have this in my notes any regrets looking back at this stage of the game you know, any regrets? I mean, I mean. Just the one with Madball not taking Hoyas off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have did that damn I rebellion regrets, tour. Man. No, like listen, having, man. I like listen. having regrets. I like, I, I, I've embraced my regrets because they've, you know, I, I enjoy my regrets. You know, they, they've, they've shaped who I am, well, you know, but in your case. I, I wouldn't even call them regrets. I would, I'd say more mistakes. You know what I mean? I made a lot of mistakes, you know what I mean? But I learned from them and I corrected them. I have no regrets because that's the way I was supposed to walk. If I didn't do the things that I did, I wouldn't be the artist who I became. You know what I mean? So I had to do certain things to, to make certain things happen. You know what I mean? Some people call them regrets. I call, yeah, I made some mistakes. You know what I mean? Should I would Should I have gone left when I should have went right? Or you know what I mean? Like it is what it is, you know? Have I did a lot of bad things to people? Have I done a lot of wrong to people? Yeah. If I apologize to you and you don't accept it, I'm good with it. You know what I mean? I forgive myself. I don't give a fuck if you forgive me. 
You know what I mean? Who the fuck are you? I apologize if you don't want to accept it and take it as as sincere as I'm giving it to you. Well, well fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I can't live my life through that. I got to keep it moving. I've always been about progression. I don't, I never live in the past. You know what I mean? Like you said before, I'll touch there because other people want it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do I necessarily have to do a Fury of Five reunion? No, I'm good. You know what I mean? I lived that. You know what I mean? Like, I kept it as real as real can be, you know? And I'm still that dude, but I'm just a, in a better place and a different mindset. And I'm just going to keep on going forward and just making better goals and be the better person every day. You know, I don't want to be angry and miserable. What, what does that do? It's just a waste of energy, you know? And even the other day, my wife is a witness. I was having a moment. It was actually yesterday. I was having a moment and I realized in my head, don't do it. You're in a better spot. You just moved here. Don't bring that energy here. And I kind of got it. I pulled it in and I didn't react. You, you reeled it in. I did. I really did, man. Where I would like go off and be like mean and degrading and just do like terrible things. Like I, I, I just want to break a person down to the last compound no matter who the hell they are you know what i mean it could be my son it could be my wife it could be my mother it could be the president of the united states if I, if i have that happening i'm going to try to break you down mentally and if i can't do it mentally then i would do it physically but now because i have so many different outlets and things and, and things happening around me that are positive that i tried to now direct myself in that and I have a little more understanding of myself and who I am and I keep it moving now. You know what I mean? If you're negative, I ain't fucking with you. You know what I mean? I, I, I got to go this way. You know, it is what it is. And I'm just learning every day. You know what I mean? That's what life is about. You live and you learn. And that's what hardcore is all about being true to yourself. And if I'm not true to myself, then what am I? You know, so I just keep it like that. 100 all the time. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Do you want to shout anybody out? I want to shout out my man Beto from Anus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Na name your yeah, name your band something that people can't pronounce. I love when people do that. Bro. <laughs> I said it to him yesterday when he was at my house. Yo, uh, yo, Beto's my family. Shout out to K and Eight. I, I, you know, they, they, I hope they all blow up and 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 do what we did at. at at that age, you know what I mean? Like, it's real big to see those kids coming coming up. You know, shout out to Bushuda Code, Departed, Wisdom and Chains, uh, CD6, and uh, Z9. Richie got a new band called Z9, you know. And uh, go check out the Departed video we did, Blood for Blood. It's dope. It's like a movie. It came out really good, you know. Just doing some things. And then got the mask up coming out. Got a song coming out on that. It's called In Our Blood. I never heard the finished product, but, you know, it seemed like they were very happy with what I laid down. So we'll see when that drops really soon. But they just dropped the song, Rage, Rage of a Dying Light, with Chris from Shadow Realm. It's real dope, yep. you know. So, you know, and I, thank you. Thank you, Drew, for having me on, man. I really appreciate it, man. My pleasure, you my know, friend. My pleasure. Good, great seeing Rap Bones and, and Sid and everybody, man. It's awesome. Shout out to Hoya. My yeah. homie, we had we had the big picture with the hardcore hug in the Corona times, bro. <laughs> hey, COVID. I hope if there's anything I could do to help, please reach out, man. I I I, I can only hope to see Fury of Five again with that original lineup with Jay. Oh, and listen, Pico. if, if, that, would be, if uh, that would mean a lot to me. Listen, uh, you know, if if it goes down, like, I'd like to document the whole thing from the beginning. Once you we get the drummer know, and and like like I was selling, uh, telling Joe. From departed like you know the dude's gonna be treated like like he was always there you know what i mean you're gonna yes, be a of course. full member yep. money everything you know what i mean so you know yeah. it, that's the way know, to do it yeah well it's the only way to do it you know what yeah. i mean like sometimes you you know i wish chris would reconsider to be honest with you but if he doesn't the next person that steps in it, it's going to be treated like they're chris rage you know and and then that's how we're going to go out and uh you know, everybody's on board. So hopefully a Fury of Five reunion is going to take place. You know, I, you know, I'll bring that Ismin though, for sure, for this <laughs> last show, you know, 
because you know oh, I, I, Chris, I need to, I need my favorite I need, show yet. Well, that's saying a lot, being that this was about the 150th show we've done. You know, that's great. It's awesome. I appreciate you, Drew. Thank you, man. My it was pleasure. very awesome. And thank you for having you me. And your loved ones, Jimmy. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. I'll take talk care. to you late. Well, there you go. Great show with a good old friend, man. That that was awesome. And uh, you know, Mike Terry, man. Listen, Mike Terry. Do I need to talk to Chris? Get me in touch with Chris. I'll straight. I'll straighten him out. You know, get in touch. Get me in touch with with uh, with Chris. You know, we'll see. Want to remind everybody that this Wednesday, Walter Monster Ryan's coming on the show. That's this Wednesday, coming up. Keeping it rolling. There is no show a week from today because we're doing the first show at the Bowery Electric. But this Wednesday, Monster's on the show. So come on, if this is what you want, come and get it in the great words of stick, man, you know, so that said, Hey, I got a couple of patrons during the show. How about that? See, it's cause it's cause and effect. How awesome is that? I want to shout out my new patrons. Where are they? I want to shout out Keith Dewey, Deweese. Am I pronouncing that right? Keith, Keith Deweese, Deweese, and also Mara Beth. Mara Beth Israel Yube, thank you both. Thank you for coming on board. And I said, I said it before, I'll say it again. Jump on the Patreon thing because I'm putting something out there that's for patrons only, that's really special and real and really great. Yes, I got it right. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for your support and welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Welcome to Fantasy Island. Um, yeah, man. Sunday. Yes, Johnny Rock. Monsters coming on. Uh, hey Beth, well you well welcome welcome and, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. 150 shows in. Where you been? Where you been living in a cave? Goddamn electric. <laughs> yes, Hags, it was a great show. It was a great show. And there's a couple. You know, I'm about to announce a couple of great ones too. We got a couple of good ones up our sleeve. It's okay. It's okay about the vaccine talk, man. I know it happens. But listen, this show is about music, and this show has always been. This show was created as an as an option, as an outlet to the to the to the news, to 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 the vaccine, to the. That's what this show is about. Music. It's about the community and the culture of hardcore and music in general. That's what this show is about. Sometimes we veer off into politics. Sometimes we veer off into the vaccine thing. That's just how it shakes out, right, Rap Bones? I'm, I'm getting ready to type right now, man. I hate to say, man, say whatever you want about me. If the system puts you back to the wall, you got to find ways around it. it. Damn right. Damn goddamn electric. I mean, look, I, I'll say it right now. I, I'm not vaxxed and I'm not getting the vax. And if you, you know are, what? I don't so want to hit you. I'll be outside at my show. I'm just letting everyone know. I'll be there representing. And I'll talk to anyone. I don't think you're shedding on me. I don't think I'm shedding on you. That's where it gets all. They're trying to turn us against us. And that's my heartfelt and how I feel, yo. Take it for right. Everybody, want. everybody's everybody's welcome to their opinion. And and this is me talking here. You know, everybody's opinion is, you know, every the way I see it is that everybody's opinion is valid and, and everybody's viewpoint is valid, you know, including Michael Graves, including Rap Bones, including everybody. Me? You know, whatever, man. I, I don't get into my personal politics. This is a music show. Absolutely. I agree with that. All right. Hey, I'll talk to you. I'll, Rap Bones, I'll talk to you. Sid, I'll talk to you. Guys, have a great week. And we'll see you on Sunday, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Damn right you will. It's going to be popping. I'm going to be there. I just want everyone to know if you want, if you're in a city early for the show, I will be fully set up by 11 a.m. I, I plan on selling to the city a little bit, so I, I see other people do it on the weekends and it's really profitable. So I'm doing it. So if you want to get coffee and come by early, 12, 1 o'clock, I'll already be fully set up and ready to go with the merch. All right, Matt. I'll talk to you outside. later. Later, guys. Sid, great job on the Wu Tang thing. That was really well done. True, I gotta say, you if you saw how much I had to cut out, it was a lot. Even during that, I had to cut out a lot. It was bananas. No, it, it, it may have been come it may have been a few pomegranates in there too. 
What was it? What was the what was the woman that wore all the fruit on her head? What was her name? Anybody? I know. Oh someone. God. I know Chiquita? who it is. Chiquita. I know, I know her name. Who is am Chiquita I? Banana Lady? Come on. I thought it was Cecilia Cruz, it. but I, I not, could be wrong. Not Cecilia Cruz. Close. Come on. Somebody out there has got to get it. Come but on. What, uh, these guys like chime in on everything. Not they Charo. It wasn't Charo. It wasn't. Yes. It was Carmen Miranda. Very okay. good. Ding, 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 Carmen, ding, 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 ding. It was Carmen Miranda. All right, bro. I'll talk to you later, Sid. All right. Later on. Listen, it was a great show. Um, yes, Hegs, it was Carmen Miranda, I know. And Hegs, if you want one of these, I, I, I'll put one aside. You can have a, a Antidote NYHC extended test pressing. I'll give it to you at the show on, on Sunday. Um, so that said, uh, yes, it was Barry Farrell. <laughs> All right, let's go have dinner. Uh, good night, Europe, wherever you are. Um, we'll see you on Wednesday for Monster. Thank you, new patrons. Thank you, everybody that supports the show. Uh, Chucky Brown and, and just, just everybody. So until then, friends, Romans, and countrymen, do good things. Goddamn electric. And good things will come to you. <laughs>